got a lot better than hanging out with the minions in Las Vegas. <laughs> Here are our final thoughts for today. Okay, so it's the 20th anniversary of Auto Club Speedway, and they've asked drivers to send in old yearbook pictures. Take a look. Matt Kenseth, Danica Patrick, Kevin Harvick. But nothing is complete without our, oh my goodness, Casey Kane and Kurt Busch. But we had to get one of our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Wow. <laughs> and just to be fair, I threw my picture in there as well. Look at you, Larry. How about that tie? I still have that tie. I'll wear that tie <laughs> next <do>? week. <laughs> you do? <laughs> well, everyone's all grown up and they're ready to go. Let's go trackside for the opening ceremonies here in Fontana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise and remove your hats as the Installation Support Command of the California State Military Reserve, stationed at Joint Forces Training Base Los Alamitos, presents our nation's colors. Remain standing as the official chaplain of Auto Club Speedway, Jeff Hamilton, offers today's invocation. Good afternoon. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we begin today by taking a moment to say thanks. Thank you for our loved ones and our friends. Thank you for the way that you are working in our lives, even at the times when we don't see or are able to recognize it. Thank you for your grace that covers us and your love that sustains us. We thank you for today's event that we get to enjoy, for the sponsors and staff who have made it possible. We thank you for the drivers and the teams, and we ask that you protect them during today's race. And we thank you for the men and women who defend freedom around the world and the first responders who protect us here at home. We have so much to be thankful for, and in moments like these, we remember it's all because of you. In Christ's name, amen. Here to perform America and honor America with the performance of our national anthem, please welcome Karen Waldrop. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glow, The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the It's action time here at Auto Club Speedway. The final scene in NASCAR goes west. Xfinity Series Racing coming up next.
From Southern California, FS1 welcomes you to Xfinity Series Racing at the Auto Club Speedway, where the stars shine bright and no brighter than today's guest driver analyst. Brad Kozlowski has already found victory lane this year in the Monster Energy Cup Series. He had four wins last season, and in 2015, he drove to victory lane right here at this two-mile track. And of course, his greatest racing achievement is that 2012 title. Today, he's with Adam Alexander and Michael Waltrip up in the booth. And guys, I'm sure spending the day with you up there is right up there with that championship. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> right there, right there. <laughs> Getting married, birthing my first child, spending time with Adam and Michael. It's it's right all in the same, Shannon. If we get the same finish today we had here last year, it would go right up to the top of the list, right? Yes. I, I mean, I think about this place. Drivers always smile when they come to Southern California. Why do you love this track so much? Oh, you know, my boss built Roger Penske, so I'm a little biased. <laughs> but I got to tell you, this is one of the best racetracks on the circuit right now, Adam. And the simple reason why is you can run multiple grooves. Multiple grooves mean means that you can get your car in clean air in the corners, so you go really fast through the corners, but you can also draft down the straightaways. And these Xfinity cars, they draft. You get big runs, you can run side by side, you can really pass here. Okay, let me ask you this. 11 cup drivers against the concrete. What's that mean for our rookies? What are they going to be up against today? I can remember my first start here at California Speedway. It's a very tough track for a rookie. Probably one of the toughest. It's like Darlington back in the old days because the groove moves around so much, you got to be able to run next to the wall. That's where a lot of the speed is, and it's very easy to get in trouble. One of the 11, this guy. Yeah, and you said it's <laughs> tough for rookies? Three of them starting in the first three rows. They got this place figured out. Let's go trackside and get the command. Race fans, it is time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome today's Grand Marshal, the Chief Operating Officer of Race Sponsor Service King, Stu Crum. Welcome to the Service King 300. Drivers, start your engines! <laughs> The engines have fired. It's race day in Southern California, so let's get geared up. What's up, everybody? It's Blake Cook. Just got to uh, uh, Auto Club Speedway, the track. It's race day. Had a good practice yesterday. We're in the top 10 in both practices, so looking forward to getting a good qualifying spot and uh, having a great race. We're uh, so far having a blast. We had a really good practice session yesterday. Uh, ended up being uh, in the top five for that in the second round. Uh, then moving on to call fun today. We had a pretty good run, uh, start eight, uh, so it's going to be a blast.
settle in. It's going to be a fun afternoon in Southern California. The NASCAR Xfinity Series, SoCal style. How entertaining is this? Who needs March Madness? This is California, and it doesn't get any better than this. It is one of the more entertaining racetracks on the schedule. Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California. Good to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon. We're live on FS1. And you know Elliot Sadler's a great leader. He leads the points. He's a leader for his team at Junior Motorsports. Great leader for his kids, Wyatt and Austin. He gets it done on track. He gets it done on the sidelines. And it doesn't matter. Baseball, basketball, whatever. Even the soccer field. Elliot Sadler always glad to put on that coach's hat. Today we're going from the driver's seat with the man that leads the championship. Elliot Sadler starting 14, Brad. Elliot Sadler, this is Brad Keselowski up in the FS1 booth. You got a copy? Uh, sure do, Brad. We just saw a beautiful Fox Sports 1 montage of your family. You're leading the points. Life is looking pretty good. It's a good time to be Elliot Sadler. What I want to know is what's it going to take to bring all that positive energy and turn it into your first win of the season? Well, we'd love to uh, turn it into a win. And, uh, you know, we feel like we got a really good car, Brad. I kind of messed up in qualifying, got on the scene the wrong way and lost a lot of momentum. So uh, we got to start a little bit further back than I want to, but I won main financial. Chevy was good yesterday. Just got to manage the tires, keep the car uh, in one piece, save the right side, and go get them at the end. Hey, it's Michael up here with Brad. We saw in the pregame how this racetrack is so bumpy down the back and three and four, five wide on the restarts. How do you deal with all that mentally, knowing all the challenges that this place represents? Well, that's what I love about this track, Michael. It gives you so many options as a driver, you know, and some responsibilities come with that. But you can kind of go where the guy in front of you is not. It sets up for wild restarts. Some guys are really going to try to run the top. Some guys are going to use the apron in three or four. But the best thing about this track, it gives you that opportunity. So 35 left in this first stage. Man, we got to hustle to make our way to the front to try to get some bonus points. So I'm sure we'll use all of it from the top to the bottom and everything in between. I think the fans are in for a great treat today. Well, we are too. We can't wait to watch your row. Have fun, and we'll check in with you later. Thank you. Elliot hoping for a repeat of 2004 when he won here in the Monster Energy Series. Let's get pit headlines. We start things off with Vince Welsh. Hey, Vince. Hello, Adam. You know, we often talk about the young guns here in the Xfinity Series, and one of those at the top of the list is rookie William Byron. Just 19 years old and only his fifth Xfinity Series race. Last week at Phoenix, he won the pole and finished a career best fourth. Today, it's his first race ever here at Auto Club Speedway, but the expectations have not been tempered. Junior Motorsports believes they have a winning program, and it's only a matter of time until William Byron is a winning driver. Chris Neville? Well, Bubba Wallace is looking to close out. NASCAR goes west with another top 10 finish. Last year, he only finished in the top three twice, but one of them was right here in California. He said his biggest concern today is just confidence in where the car is going to go. They didn't have many long runs in practice yesterday. He said with these clouds today, the sun coming in and out, topic of the day is going to be change. Matt? Chris, Justin Allgaier is chasing back-to-back -back wins for the first time in his Xfinity Series career. Today will be win number five if he can pull that out. The car not good on the short run but it certainly is, drives well on the long run. Look for that seven car to be up high. Good news for Justin Allgaier, Matt. No matter what happens today, after last weekend's success, he's already locked into the playoffs. Just about time to put the green flag in the air. We'll do it next on FS1.
Final round of NASCAR goes west live at Auto Club Speedway. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. What a beautiful scene that is, huh? The infield is full of people. Got some folks in the grandstands, and we got some really fast cars. Look at the air tip. Cool. There's some good sticking out there right now, Brad. Trice got a lot of grip, but I'm looking at some of these other things. Pit road speed, fuel windows, those might come into play with these different stages. And out in front of the field, Michael, your ride, the 2018 Toyota Camry XSE. How fast you have that thing going? 145 in a Camry. How good of a day is that? It wasn't a good day for Shannon Spake. <laughs> All right, Joey Logano on the pole. First time for Team Penske here. Chooses the outside lane. Got a rookie and Daniel Hemrick beside him. Here we go. Big jump for Joey Logano. Two, three car lengths on second place. And what a... What a move by Eric Jones just to fall in behind Hemrick. He had the speed to take him three wide, gave him a push, and it's going to pay off because Hemrick is clearing that outside lane and will be second when they hit the back straightaway. I love watching the cars blend off of turn two here. The track really narrows up on you. You get three wide in the corner, and boy, you got to be careful off of two. I think I actually saw four wide. If you really wanted to count the lanes, I love that. Look at there, that's what I love. Look at Bubba Wallace and Brendan Gone. They're off of the track on the apron, making passes. Gone with a strong move off turn four. Kyle Busch in that bright blue and orange number 18 started 16th, is one here six times. Not afraid early driving for Joe Gibbs. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about him all day, but especially here at the start. Remember, he did not make it to the second and final round of Xfinity qualify. He has a little bit fresher tires and he knows how to get around this place. He's won here six times. He's going to be tough. 16th to 9th in one lap for Kyle Busch. Battle in the top five. Paul Menard driving the two this week inside of the rookie William Byron in the nine. Look at him dive hard down into the corner, making it stick, and then onto the apron for extra grip and helps the car rotate through the corner, trying to get around Eric Jones. And look at William Byron there. Every lap you watch, Brad, he'll just get smarter and better. By the time they come to the checker, he could be a racer. This is a big race for these rookies. It really is because all of the Monster Energy Cup Series owners are watching. And this is a tough track to go around. The owners know that. And if you're looking for that next big chance, that next big ride, prove yourself here today and you've really shown yourself. Adam and I were wandering around the garage area this morning and talked to three or four crew chiefs. The two car of Paul Menard was one of the first they mentioned about being good on the long run. He's also good on the short haul too making the pass here into the top five. I really like what I've seen, Michael, out of the RCR cars this weekend. They've had a lot of speed. Daniel Hemrick, obviously, outside pole, but also was first in uh, first round of qualifying. So they're, they're in good shape today. I mentioned Kyle Busch started 16th, was up to ninth. Now he's 10th. And behind Elliott Sadler, who started 14th, championship leader, is now in the ninth position three laps in. Look how high Kyle Busch is. That's him in the bright blue car back there, the 18. And here comes Kyle Larson in the 42 around William Byron. These two are racing for the sixth position. When I think of long run speed, this is the guy I think of, Kyle Larson. Every week, his long run speed is phenomenal. I'm sure we're gonna see him moving to the front here every lap as this run goes on. Larson got his first career victory at this racetrack. Three years ago, 2014, came back the next day, was a runner-up in the Monster Energy Series to the other Kyle, Kyle Busch. Turns out they both get around this place pretty good. Logano leads it four laps in. Hemrick is second. Another rookie, Cole Custer, is third. Mentioned Paul Menard up to fourth. Eric Jones has settled in to the fifth position. Elliott Sadler's making a move on his teammate, William Byron, to the inside, trying to bring Brandon Jones in that 33 car along with him. Whoa, get a little bit sideways. Now, what you saw there is he crossed these little seams, the sealer seams. The car slipped up on him. It's very easy to lose control over those seams in the corners. Watch this big run Kyle Busch will have. What will he do with it? All the way to the bottom. Crosses down underneath Brandon Jones, trying to take those two spots in one swoop. We call that a three for one. Is that what we get? What, what, what do you, what do you, you got three positions there, I think, in that corner. <laughs> Called a nice move. Smart, calculated. That's, that's great experience and great technique. Looks like Jones has got a strong car in that 33 Vince, but he's trying to get around William Byron. Anything good to report from the nine camp? 
Well, the one thing about William Byron, you guys touched on it a little bit with this just being his fifth race and this being a difficult track in the sense of how many different lanes you can run and all the learning curve that you have to deal with here. But he's still learning and talking with his crew chief, Dave Ellens, before the race that he, he's still learning what he wants and needs from the car and how he as a driver can affect the car and help the crew chief make those changes. It is a steep learning curve for the young guy here today. And the learning process continues. Kiss the wall off a of turn yeah, four there. Yeah, I see there. just a, a little bit of scratch marks. You know, uh, the sprint, uh, Monster Energy Cup Series cars are, are really bad when they hit the wall. They lose a lot of speed. But in the Xfinity Series, you can get away with a little bit more as long as you hit the wall square. If you hit it with the front, you hit it with the rear, you're in trouble. But he hit it pretty square right here, so he should be okay as long as he doesn't have a tire rub. He's just got to get back in a rhythm and, and get going. You remember what happened to him last week at Phoenix? He pounded the outside wall off turn four, came back to get his career best finish a top five for the young man. So he's not intimidated. He knows he's got a lot to learn. And bouncing off the wall like that, that's a lesson that you learn. That's a, that's a big lesson that you can get away with a little bit in this series, but not in the other series. So I'm sure he's learning every lap. Saw Brennan Poole there on board with him in the 48, looking for his second consecutive top 10. His teammate, the 42 of Kyle Larson, went around Eric Jones for position, the 20 now sixth. Hey, we got no regrets. We weren't even this week. Would you rather be down on rear grip or down on front grip here, Brad? What's easier to deal with? Well, right now, one of the things that I'd be telling Eric Jones if I was his crew chief is you're on used tires. These are the tires you've qualified on. They've got a number of laps on. And used tires on a track like this, Michael, always seem to be just a little bit looser. So I'm sure his crew chief is thinking, all right, well, we'll, we'll have our first pit stop here in a little bit. Let's just put some tires on and see if that'll come back to us. Advantage out front for Joey Logano, 1.7 seconds over Daniel Hemrick. Those two positions have not changed. Menard, Custer, Larson, the top five. And there's the 98 of Casey Mears. Couple of runner-up finishes here. Seen Eric Almirola driving that car a lot to begin the season. First of 12 starts for Casey, and they're moving up 19th to 13th early. That's a good run for that team and for Casey. Got Geico military on that Ford Mustang of his, and sharp looking car a nice looking car and he's on our list of the biggest movers here early Brennan Poole to the inside can he do away with Ty Dillon look how much distance is between those two cars we talk about all the width and the room there is in the corners you could drive two or three cars between those two and that's really important Michael because even though you can't see it these cars run on air uh, and for the folks at home, I know that that might be a big question mark for you, but by being able to get so far away from each other in the corners, they can get the air back on their car and carry a lot of speed. So this track really affords that for you. I said Casey Mears had gone from 19th to 13th. He's now 12th and looking for more, Chris. Yeah, he's having a good run right now. Yesterday in practice, he said one of his biggest concerns was just trying to figure these cars out. The last time he was in an Xfinity Series car at California was over 10 years ago. So he really didn't know where he needed to go with the car. But talking to him today, he said, I think we finally figured it out. I think we have a decent car underneath us. And he said, I'm going to be in this car 11 more times this year. You're going to see him at Texas and Richmond and then a bunch of other races throughout the season. He has one career win, Casey Mears. It came in 2006. Brad in 2006 was just knocking on doors, trying to find a ride. Now he's a cup champion and his teammate, Joey Logano, out front of California. Larson rodando top 5, quinta la posición Larson que largó de séptimo 39-91 durante la clasificación temprano hoy día con su Chevrolet. Tuvimos Ford, Chevy y Toyota.
stage racing is definitely changing the way we're looking and preparing for each race. You can have a couple of bad days, but still get some points away from your stages. We can be aggressive with our changes. We can try to keep track position more, and we can take chances to try to get those all important points. I've had to change how I attack uh, each and every lap, and I think that it's made me a better race car driver. Uh, that being said, it has been crazier, but definitely been a lot of fun. Last two guys you heard there, Elliot Sadler, Justin Allgaier, their teammates, and they are one, two. When you talk about points scored in stages one and two so far in 2017, how about this battle? Kyle, Kyle, and Paul. Paul is fading. He charged up to the third position, passing Cole Custer in the last two laps. Cole's got around him, and now send the 42 of Larson and the 18 of Bush around Menard. And looks like Eric Jones is going to try to creep in there as well. So the car that we thought had a lot of speed looks like he might be fading early. Watch this run. Here's that draft we were talking about. Big run down the straightaway. He ran the top as well, but that draft just accentuates that run. Kyle Busch looking to the outside of Larson. Eric Jones looking up, uh, up ahead and seeing the line that Kyle is running. And, and Brad, he's been the closest guy to that outside wall since the race started. Kyle Busch is really running high. Yeah, he's really took off the last three or four laps here. I was a little bit concerned that he didn't get to the field faster than he did, knowing he had a little fresher tires and a little more experience here. But maybe he was just saving his tires and, and biding his time because now he's really taking off. About halfway through our opening stage, let's give credit where credit is due. Yeah, Joey Logano's leading, not surprising. He's won here twice, and we know he'll be good here tomorrow. But look at the guys behind him, Daniel Hemrick, and Cole Custer, a couple of rookies, had never seen this place prior to practice yesterday and doing exactly what they need to do. And as we get deep into the run, continuing to turn out good lap times. And, and you know what? I'm really impressed by these two because, like I said, this is one of the toughest tracks for a rookie you can ever run on. And Daniel's keeping good pace here. He's still running second. He's about two and a half seconds back, but I haven't seen him slip up once. Well, Cole Custer earning the third spot in this double zero car. His lap time last time by was two tenths better than our leader, Joey Logano. So he's got a lot of pace in his Haas automation Mustang. Hemrick running second, a guy that you're very familiar with, drove for you in the truck series, made the playoffs last year. He did. Uh, he's a great driver, and he's got what I feel like the potential to be a, a future superstar in the uh, Monster Energy Cup Series. Custer's got company here. Kyle Busch is fourth after starting 16th. He's on the move early. So he's talking about his tires and how uh, it, the balance of the car has equalized out. And, and so that's important because sometimes, uh, Adam, when you have a, a car that uh, is loose in qualifying, you, you get a little nervous that, uh-oh, it's going to even build looser in the race. But he's talking about how it started off pretty loose, but that kind of evened out a little bit on him. That's the sign of a really good race car. And, of course, he's doing a great job managing his car, running the different lanes as well. Down to the bottom against Custer off turn two. Got a good run off there. You see the oh. car gets a little bit loose, but the front end stuck. It looked like he was going to be able to make a strong pass there. It got loose, slowed him up a bit, but I think he's going to clear him down here in three. One thing's for sure, Michael, he kept his foot in it. <laughs> that didn't surprise you in the least, did no, it? No, no, and that baby ran down the straightaway. Woo. 16 laps to go in stage one. Kyle Busch from 16th to third makes that pass. Cole Custer brings his teammate Eric Jones with him. Guy that was on the pole here two years ago, Jones up to fourth. And evidently, Jones is loose in the rear end issue he had early has gotten better with his car. What does this track tend to do, Brad? If you're loose, do you get looser? Or do they seem to tighten up as they race? Well, they, they tend to loosen up. But what I noticed on Eric Jones is he got a lot faster when Kyle passed him. <laughs> I think he probably picked a few things up. Some comers and goers in the early going. And one of those guys doing the going is Paul Menard. Drop back to seventh, Chris. What's the story there? Paul Menard fading a little bit right now, and it was interesting because talking to his crew chief, Justin Alexander, earlier today, he said, boy, we were really happy in practice yesterday. We unloaded with a lot of speed. We just did some fine-tuning, did some long runs. Happy with the speed of the car, but right now, Paul Menard saying, I'm losing grip after uh, not even 15 laps here, mainly getting off the corner. He said the back end of that car sliding around way too much. Lost another position while you were talking there, Chris. Elliott Sadler able to get by. 14th to 7th for the guy 
that leads the championship. 14 laps remaining in our opening stage. Joey Logano, Daniel Hemrick, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, Cole Custer, the top five as we go side by side. Back here at Auto Club Speedway, where we are nearing the end of stage one. Larry McReynolds, let's get a look at today's Liberty Mutual Worry Less strategy. Well, first off, Shannon, trust your spotter. He will let you know where the leaders are running. And then take it easy over the bumps, especially on low air pressure. That's when you damage those left side tires. And keep your eyes on debris. This place is notorious for paper flying around, especially on the front straightaway. So every once in a while, you take care of yourself and peek at that water temperature gauge, Brad. That's really important here. Believe me, I've had a lot of issues with that over the years. You get a lot of debris here at California Speedway. I'm watching Joey Logano here, 10 laps to go in the first stage. And it looks to me like Kyle Busch is just a tiny bit faster, Michael, maybe about two tenths a lap. Closing but, in though. Yeah, Logano's experience and knowledge of this racetrack and Kyle Busch, those guys are gonna make adjustments to their cars when they make this first pit stop. That'll make them perform even better after that. My question, Brad, is do you think Logano tries to hop in the pits a couple of laps before the stage ends and maybe get some service and get to, get some track position even further as we race toward the, the next stage. And this is the first time we've had this format at a two mile track. So the opportunities for strategy may be a little bit more wide open, certainly than they would have been last week at Phoenix and, and even more so than what we saw at Atlanta or Las Vegas. Hey, you're right? right, because what makes a two mile speedway different is that you can pit and not lose a lap if you're in the front few cars. Uh, but I think, and this is just a suspicion of mine, Joey Logano really wants that stage win. He's not going to do that. <laughs> well, I think we could see if you're up in the five, top five or top six, maybe get on pit road, get your tires, get your service, and then stay out. It'd be interesting to see if any of the teams play that. A really fast car is this one, Elliot Sadler. He's moved right up on the bumper of Cole Custer. They're racing for the fifth position. Sadler's got a good ride today. And there's a gaggle of cars right here. A lot of spots to be had to battle all the way from fourth to sixth. And not too far behind his minority. He's kind of caught up a little bit again in seven. And you know, Adam, as we race toward the end of stage one of lap 35, in years past, there would be no sense of urgency for Elliott Sadler to grab that spot away from Cole Custer. That's a part of our past. You want to get every spot you can, every second of the race, to get those important stage points. He scored more points in stage one and stage two than anybody. That's why he's our championship leader. I, I think you own that right at NASCAR's top level, if I'm, I'm 
thinking right, Brad. 64 points, I think you've scored in stage one and stage two this year. So how does the sense of urgency change right now as you see Elliott Sadler pick up a couple of more spots? That's a big pass, really. That's two points. And, you know, you just don't know how these races can play out. We, Larry just asked me about debris. You can get debris on the front end of this car and blow an engine with five laps to go. Oh, we got a spin here. Matt Tiff. Around in the 19 car. Oh, hold Needs the brakes. To, God, get, it, get the brakes down. We can. Rookie of the year contender. Roll now this can. is Speed where it gets interesting. Don't tear it up if the tires are flat. He was running 18th, six <laughs> laps to go in stage one. And we have our first caution of the afternoon racing here with Bubba Wallace in the purple six. Well, Tiff tried to get to the bottom of Bubba and then hold it to the left and get the gas down to complete the pass. It got loose on him and around he went. And I'm gonna agree with Brad Kozlowski. Action's gonna pick up here on pit road. This is gonna be really critical. We have six laps left in the stage. We're probably gonna go back to green before the stage ends. And so we're gonna have some guys that are really gonna gamble right here. Fuel window here, Larry's right around 45 laps. So if you pit it here, gain track position to start stage two, you would know you could make it all the way to the end of stage two before you had to come again, right? Yeah, but it's not about fuel. It's about four fresh Goodyear tires here. And I guess the question is, are you just worried about trying to win this stage? Or are you just worried about putting four fresh tires? I think everybody from about like sixth or seventh or eighth on back, they're going to come get four fresh tires. The decision, the tough decision on those guys at the very front of the pack, what do I do here? But uh, th the pace has fallen off over two seconds over these first 30 laps. It's my opinion, Larry, that if you're Logano, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, the cup guys, you pit. That's how you're going to win the race. If you're an Xfinity guy, you stay out and try to win the stage. This is uh, not the situation we wanted here, but in order to maintain this uh, stage position, I think that road's going to get pretty busy here. Well, this is not good news for the 22 team. This is exactly what you don't want to have happen when you're the leader. You had control of the race, and you know, Michael, that the field is just going to do the opposite of whatever you do. There's so many differing agendas right now, and there's so many brainwaves that are being uh, put out there trying to figure out exactly what the strategy would be. But, but five laps to go. They're going to pit with four to go in the stage. By the time we get everybody cycled through and lined up, at the most, we're probably going to have a two-lap shootout to end stage one. And I would say it's not out of the realm of possibility that this thing actually ends under caution. You guys agree with me here? That's, it's very possible. Although it was just a simple spin, it should be a quick cleanup. I think we'll go back to green, but for how long? All right, here are the top five. And it looks like Logano is going to come down. It's he, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, Elliott Sadler, and Daniel Hemrick. Why not come for four fresh tires, Matt Yoakum? The 18, the top left of your screen, Kyle Busch. He made from 16th all the way up to second. Says the right rear still wants to step out on him a little bit. Chassis adjustment there. Meanwhile, Daniel Hemrick, nice solid performance so far. He says the final third of the corner, the car just wants to go on the free side. Vince. Well, your leader, Joey Logano, bottom left, said it starts loose and then just builds tighter as the run goes. Four tire change and air pressure adjustment for the 22. For Eric Jones, he said it's just too loose. They're going to give an air pressure adjustment, try to snug that 20 up just a bit, and the 22 of Logano easily the first one off pit road. Now, a few drivers did stay out, Vince, but as you said, Logano wins the battle off pit road, plus one for Kyle Busch plus two for Elliott Sadler. That could be big for our championship leader. And William Byron picked up three positions. Late going stage one in Fontana, California.
So 10 years ago, the last time a Ford won here in Fontana in the Xfinity Series, saw Cole Custer, Joey Logano. These pictures from 10 years ago, where were you? There's Ryan Reed racing on the short tracks in Southern California. And here's the page that gives you the numbers. Some of these guys are gonna be a little bit embarrassed, I think. Cole Custer was nine years old. He never thought he'd be racing at this place, and now he's trying to get Ford off the snide, get him back to victory lane. Well, it looked like Joey Logano was gonna have a great shot at that, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like it, not so much anymore. Yeah, he was caught speeding in every segment on pit road, by the way, so he was consistent. And here are our Ford track facts. Seven straight wins from 2002 to 2006 by five different drivers. And of course, this is the oldest asphalt that we compete on. This place built in 1996. They have never repaved it. And Logano, who had led the first 31 laps, as we said, caught speeding on pit road. He will drop to the tail for the restart. That's got to be concerning for future pit stops, right? Yeah, it sounds like there's a calibration issue. You have to remember that the drivers do not have a speedometer. They uh, only measure RPM. So they use lights that correspond to RPM, and it sounds like it wasn't calibrated right. We're going to get the green flag with one lap to go. How important are tires at Auto Club Speedway? Well, J.J. Yaley is going to start on the pole. That means he's first, and he's just searching for some stage points. Is he going to get him? Is he going to stay in the top 10? One lap. Is he going to stay in the top 10? No way. <laughs> I think he'll be lucky to be 15. <laughs> All right, it's Yaley up there with Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, Elliot Sadler, William Byron. One lap to go to end stage one. And this could get crazy, guys. What One that, lap, a lot of points on the line. What that could have been was a rough break for Elliott Sadler, lined up right behind the slower car on the old tires of Yaley, but Elliott did a nice job on the start. He, he did. He might win this stage. Sadler right in behind Kyle Busch, side by side for third. That's Eric Jones outside of Kyle Larson, near contact there. Bouncing wow. off Kyle Larson in that orange 42 car. Kyle's looking for the win as well. Sadler goes high into turns three and four. That's Kyle Busch down low. And Kyle Larson, he had a big run off of turn two to gain a lot of spots. He looks like he has a lot of speed for this short run. Here they come, back to the green and white checkered stage. One to Kyle Busch, Elliott Sadler, the top series regular. Jones able to get by Larson at the line for third. William Byron, the final car inside the top five. Ty Dillon, Cole Custer, Brennan Poole, Paul Menard and Daniel Hemrick, your top 10 stage one completed Auto Club Speedway.
It's the final weekend of NASCAR Goes West, and if you want to join the fun, follow Toyota Racing on Twitter. And as always, when you join the conversation, use the hashtag NASCAR Goes West. First 30 laps of this thing pretty tame, right? Joey Logano feeling really good. Then he pits, gets caught speeding, and we had quite a rally to the end of stage one. Yeah, and I really appreciate the job that Elliott Sadler did. He got hung behind the slower car of Yaley on those old tires. He was able to make the move, grab second place in this stage, and an all-important nine stage points. And his teammate, William Byron, who started up front, drifted back around 10th, ended up getting into the top five, and he scored six points in that opening stage. Larry, what do you see in any surprises with how the end of stage one transpired as far as strategy? Well, we had mentioned as far as how much the race pace had slowed up. I, I was a little surprised to Michael's point that more maybe of the regulars didn't roll the dice and just try to score some stage points. I would say right here, even though pit road will be open this time, they only have a lap on their tires. Yeah, if you're at the back of the pack, maybe you come in, make more adjustments. But right now, everybody for the most part they have four sets of stickers for these last 113 laps of racing. Wow. Getting ready to go here in stage two. Kyle Busch, Elliott Sadler, Kyle Larson, Eric Jones, William Byron, the top five. Ty Dillon, Brennan Poole, Cole Custer, Paul Menard, Daniel Hemrick, the top ten. And a mention for Ryan Reed, Darrell Wallace Jr., teammates from Roush Fenway on the move early. Didn't have great race cars, but they're 11th and 12th as we get set to go in stage two. Yeah, Elliott Sadler had a great stage one from 14th position all the way up to second. Got the most stage points of any regular. Let's check in with Elliott. Well, buddy, you couldn't have uh, had that go much better, that first stage. Uh, the car seems really fast on the long haul, too. Great job out there. Yeah, we knew we had a good car from yesterday. And I kind of put us to the hole where we qualified at, but felt really comfortable getting up there. Look, we had a shot. Had a great pit stop. Our one main finance was fast. It's just... Uh, Kyle was so good on restarts. I knew I had to go where he wasn't in turn three or four, and he made a good corner and uh, really wanted that bonus point, you know, to transfer to the playoffs, but we weren't able to get it this time. But we're, we're trying to keep our track position, stay up front, and try to go get it here to second stage. Well, good work, Elliot. This is Brad Kozlowski, and uh, I'm curious, what are you guys working on to find a little bit more for this next run? What do you need? Yeah, we just want to try to just keep some, uh, you know how it is here, Brad. You got to get the car to roll through the center really fast. You want to pick up the throttle and make sure the car keeps turning on the throttle. So, you know, we're a little tight late exit there. So I just want to make a few changes, try to keep it. When I give it the throttle, I can make the car turn. So just a little too snug right now. We'll keep making adjustments to it. And those guys in the pits probably know which way the, the track's going to go to. So, so far, so good. See what the car does up here in clean air. It might, you know, it might act a little differently and we'll go from there. 10-4. Good luck to you, Elliot. Michael, you said it. Elliot Sadler started 14th. He's second. Kyle Busch started 16th. He's the race leader when we return to Fontana, California.
accomplish the race leader as we prepare for the restart in stage number two. Toyota out front, and out in front of him, the 2018 Toyota Camry XSE, our pace vehicle today. I want to remind everyone of Joey Logano, led the first 31 laps, caught speeding on pit road, restarted 35th with one lap to go in stage one, made up a handful of positions. He'll be 24th. Got to keep an eye on that 22. We know he's got speed, but he's back in the middle of the mess. Restart with Kyle Busch taking the outside lane. Elliot Sadler is inside. Eric Jones, Kyle Larson, Ty Dillon, your top five. We take the green flag as we complete lap six of stage number two. Really strong push from the bottom lane. Elliot Sadler getting help from Kyle Larson and William Byron. Might push him to the lead. Larson with a strong move underneath them. He's going to pass all of them. Larson shot out of a cannon on the restart. Wow, Elliot Sadler like just about a half a car length of driving up in front of Kyle Busch. He'll try to squeeze in the high side ahead of Eric Jones in that 20 car. Ty Dillon driving the three, a part of this mix. Sparks flying down on the apron is Kyle and Kyle battle. We got to see that restart again. Look at Ty Dillon trying to squeeze up in there. What a battle. So what happened here was there was a big push on the bottom lane. These cars will draft very, very well. Kyle Larson with help from William Byron pushes Elliott Sadler. Elliott almost clears Kyle. And in trying to do so, Kyle Larson just sneaks underneath them and passes the other Kyle and Elliott. Takes look, the lead. And look at William Byron trying to follow along behind Larson. Couldn't quite make it work, but that was an aggressive move and a great move. Cole Custer out of line trying to make something happen there. Inside of Eric Jones. RCR teammates, 21 of Daniel Hemrick, saw the two of Paul Menard there down on the inside. You know, we talk about the Monster Energy drivers being out there with our Xfinity guys. It's just got to mean the world, though, to a guy like Cole Custer, William Byron, to mix it up with, with Eric Jones and Kyle Larson, the guys they're going to see race tomorrow, knowing they can match them turn for turn. Bubba Wallace starting to make up some ground. Third here a year ago, didn't like his car in practice, faded early. But he is rallying, trying to get in the top 10 one more time. He's been there the last three weeks. Watch Paul Menard in that bright yellow number two in the 48 of Brennan Poole. This is where turn two just gets really narrow and the cars just run into each other. We're going to see that a lot today and tomorrow. Brennan Poole in the 48 car. He's running along in the 11th position. Got a solid car, Adam. I like what I'm seeing from Poole so far today. You know who I like? Joey Logano. Look at this, Brad. He was outside the top 30. In fact, 35th in line after the penalty and knocking on the door of the top 10. I don't think we've had five green flag laps since the penalty, Vince. Well, and it's interesting. You know, we often talk about why Cup drivers run the Xfinity Series races, how they benefit from running on Saturday as it relates to Sunday. Joey Logano made the comment about how that pit road speeding penalty and how his dash warning lights will be something they'll want to take an extra look at for tomorrow to make sure the same penalty doesn't come their way in the Cup race on Sunday. No question, though, he is a man possessed right now. He is on the move in that 22. Said he was trying to rally into the top 10. He is there. Ninth as he goes around Paul Menard, trying to get eight from Daniel Hemrick. Remember what Elliot Sadler said when he was riding around before the race? You got to go where they're not. You've got to take your car into positions where the other cars aren't running to help your aero package, to help your drafting. And look, that's what Joey has done. He's driven onto the groove that no one else is taking, and he's made it work. He's seventh now, by the way. <laughs> we knew the car was fast. But in traffic in Fontana, this is impressive. Um, but we'll find our way back up there. We're going to be all right. Practice for me tomorrow, for tomorrow, back to the field. That's right. Slicing and dicing. What I really like that I'm seeing right now is he can run the bottom. And we haven't seen any of the other cars do that, and he's making a lot of passes down there. That's a power move. What I like is this battle for the lead. It's the Kyles going at it. Just ahead of Ty Dillon in the third spot. Remember Kyle Bush passed Kyle Larson the last run before the end of stage one, running the top like this. Yeah, he's run the most aggressive line, really higher than anybody else, right up against that outside wall, and he's making it work. 
you mentioned Ty Dillon, Michael. That three car not been great in 2017. Came back ironically from a speeding penalty last week in Phoenix to get their first top 10. Ty really good today. They're in the third position. Sadler, the points leader, back in fourth. What about that three car, Chris? Well, Adam, you said it. They need a good result at Daytona. They had a mechanical problem, then wrecks at both Las Vegas and Atlanta last week. And they said they didn't have a strong car, but they finally got that first top 10. And Ty Dillon said before the race today, this is the best car I've ever had in California. So very confident right now saying that car just a little bit loose. Look at this battle for the lead. Kyle Larson up high. Kyle Busch to the bottom. He made the high side work in three and four to get the momentum. Now he's trying to go to the bottom and complete the pass. Brad, how much as a driver do you know their speed right out next to the outside wall like that? But you've got to be a little bit conservative and not get into the wall and flatten the side of your car. Do you ever spend parts of the race running away from the wall just knowing that you could get into it? Absolutely, and that's what I see. Wow, this battle's really heating up. Trying to pull the side drafts down the straightaway. That's what it's going to take to clear the pass. It looks like it's going to work for Kyle Busch. But to your point, Michael, you have to run close to the wall here to be fast. <laughs> but if you live up there, you're going to hit it and you have to be careful. Kyle Busch in the lead, and a second and a half behind him, right of your screen, is Joey Logano, who's working over Eric Jones for fourth in the running order. This, this has been an incredible rally and a great opportunity to get experience for tomorrow. Remember, they didn't qualify that 22 car yesterday. That means he's starting deep in the field in the Monster Energy Series event. And you also have to think about the, the challenges and what Joey Logano had going on in his mind. His crew chief came on the radio and said, you were pretty much speeding all the way down pit road. Joey Logano said, I'm going to get it back for you, boss. And man, he's driving the wheels off that thing now trying to do just that. It's funny how that works, Michael, with drivers. When you make a mistake, you, you, you tend to drive just a little bit harder the next run. Went around Eric Jones. Jones said, not so fast. Look, crossover. Logano outside lane, is this where the momentum really pays off for the 22? Yeah, and the whole point of that move is he wanted to get up in front and take away the line of Eric Jones. He knew Eric Jones has been really good on the top, and he was able to out position, kind of box him out almost in a basketball way, and keep him on the bottom where he knows he's not as strong. We were, Brad said during the break after the speeding penalty, I don't know if Joey Logano can come back from 33rd <laughs> position and get into contention. He had different plans, didn't he, Brad? Thanks for the reminder, Michael. <laughs> he, might, that. he might win stage two. <laughs> 20 laps to go. He's got a long ways left. He's only a second, a little over a second back. The last few laps, he's been a tenth, even two tenths faster. This lap here, half a tenth faster. So uh, plenty of time to catch up. Second week in a row, this 22 team has had some adversity. Ryan Blaney unable to get through the inspection line. Started deep in the field at Phoenix last week. Rallied to finish second. Logano up to third.
15 laps to go. Stage two, NASCAR Xfinity Series, Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California with Michael Waltrip, Brad Keselowski. I'm Adam Alexander, Joey Logano, pit road speeding penalty. No problem from 35th to second. Here's how he got the runner up spot. A little lap car action here. Using the bottom lane, he saw Kyle Larson get a little bit loose on the high side off of turn four. Gets the run, but Joey's right there with him. He just goes right down to the bottom and, and passes him. This is a power move. Shows a lot of speed in that car today. I think um, Joey Logano is going off the old baseball term. You know you're supposed to hit them where they ain't? Well, he's driving his car where they're not, and he's making it work. Since the restart, plus 21. Picked up a handful of positions on the quick restart at the end of stage one after he got the speeding penalty. He's a second behind race leader Kyle Busch, and Kyle Larson is now settled into third, Matt. Adam Polar opposite stages for Kyle Larson in the 42. Way too free the first stage. They tightened up the car with a wedge adjustment. Now he says the car way too tight on entry. He just cannot roll the center. But those are the type of adjustments that Kyle can articulate to his crew chief, Mike, and the guys can go to work on it. And, and Brad, how much difference can you make a car if you're saying I'm plowing in the center? Is there enough that they can do in an 11 <laughs> second pit stop to change the way the car handles? These cars are fairly sensitive. You could make small adjustments, Michael, and to the, the viewers at home and, and make pretty good difference to find speed. But when we talked earlier, about the struggles of what makes California Speedway so hard for these rookies, so hard for these Xfinity only drivers. That's it. It's really difficult to not only find the groove, but also give that feedback to make those adjustments. Because if you go a little bit too far or you don't go quite enough and that car's out of control sideways or really tight, you're not gonna have the speed and you're gonna have a bad day. Elliott Sadler in the one, trying to get back in the top five. Crossover from Ty Dillon. The three car stays in the fifth spot with 12 to go stage two. Don't ask you back up there that very top like he was. I think he was better up there. I don't know, he's pretty damn good there, Billy. Yeah, he ran three and four bottom a lot that first run, but uh, one and two, I think, definitely at the left. He may be just trying to keep the right side on it early. 20 is ringing all the way around the very top. He's pretty fast, like 40 feet right there. Yeah, tempo. He said it, Richard Childress is talking with the spotter, and the spotter said, probably trying to keep the right side on the car. That's a pretty good idea, right, Brad? That's what you were talking about earlier. Well, I did have the car owner on the radio, so I, maybe that would help sell him a little bit. Elliot Sadler gets around Todd Dillon. Now Paul Menard's trying to take that spot away. Dillon's running in the sixth position. A couple of Monster Energy Series regulars racing for position there, racing for position here. You'll see him on track again tomorrow, 3 Eastern time is when our coverage begins on Fox as we wrap things up out west. Kyle Busch is the race leader. If you look at the Fox box top of your screen, he won stage one after qualifying in the 16th position. He has now led 19 laps. The leader of the most laps, our pole sitter Joey Logano, led the first 31, had that speeding penalty, got to second. I thought he might run down Kyle Busch but the 22 may be fading a bit, and now Larson back in position to get second. Yeah, Joey pushed it pretty hard and made a lot of passes. Like I said, power moves. When you can run the middle and bottom of the track, it's a little bit harder on the tires, uh, and, and he's starting to fall back a little bit here. Kyle Busch comfortable out front by a second and a half over Logano. Kyle Busch and Logano, one and two. Eric Jones got the third there around Kyle Larson. How about the rally for Jones? Didn't like his car early. But now a lot of speed for this 20 Toyota. Oh, looks like Kyle Larson got sideways passing a lap car here. That's Martin Watt that they go by on the outside. He's on the outside in that 90 car. Canadian lost his driver. momentum. Yeah, lost his momentum. Nine laps coming up on eight laps to go in stage two. Good battle by youngsters here. Poole is eighth in the 48. That's William Byron in the nine car, scored in the 10th position. Top series regular as we close on the end of this second stage is Elliott Sadler in line to get some more points and pad his cushion 
at the front. Surprise, surprise. He's a stage master this year, just scoring all these points. And right now in ninth position is William. He's in 10th and Hemrick's 11th, so Hemrick wouldn't get any stage points and Byron would. There you see the day for Joey Logano. All that time out front, the road speeding penalty, and then the rally back inside the top three. Now second is where he is in the running order and reminding everyone for later today and again tomorrow, this is the first time we've been to Auto Club Speedway since they added the timing lines on pit road. Eight here last year, 14 for today and tomorrow. So the mental mindset for drivers, something you really got to pay attention to, Brad. That just means there's more areas to get caught speeding. It's like having more cops on the drive home. <laughs> it keeps you more honest. Battle for 12th here. Justin Algar has slowly crept his way into contention. Bubba Wallace just ahead of Algar in the seven. And Brad, what's that do to Logano when he gets ready to come to pit road, knowing that his pit road speeding lights aren't calibrated necessarily properly right? What, it, what kind of mentality will he have as he comes to pit road? It's on the back of his mind for sure. To know that he's been in so many different segments on pit road, he's going to have to figure out that calibration kind of on the fly. So this is uh, an unenviable position for him. Six laps to go now in stage two. But Slow Joey's down. looking forward to getting to pit road. He, uh, he, like I said, he drove his car really hard, and he's paying a little bit for it right now. And I think he's pretty close to having a shot at Kyle on even tires. Let's look over Brendan Poole's shoulder, and right there is his tachometer. And that's exactly how he's going to have to understand what speed to run down pit road. That's all the information he has, right, Brad? Now, this is really important. Absolutely, Michael. A lot of questions on Twitter about this. I was just reading it from our fans, and they want to know, why do we not have a speedometer in the car? Well, we have the technology to put speedometers in the cars. It's just it makes it too easy. We want it to be hard to go down pit road. As drivers, that's part of what makes it special is who can go the fastest down pit road without speeding. And you have to go the very fastest you can go because if you don't, you're going to get passed on pit road. And you're not going to get those spots back. So you have to push it. This tachometer is all we have to use. Again, right here, you can see it. And so with Joey, it was just calibrated a little bit off, it sounds like. And he got caught speeding. and. He, that's how it makes his day a lot tougher. But he was the leader, so he was out there by himself. Now he'll be back behind Kyle Busch. Can he use him to pace a little bit, maybe get a better feel for where he is in regard to pit road speed? It always helps to have somebody else to go off, for sure, because at least he'll know if he's speeding, so is Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see, Larry? Well, I just wanted to follow up on what Brad was saying. I get the same question. How come we do not run a speedometer in these cars? The biggest reason, it's not necessarily a max speed. You know, you may be 10 over, but if you get it slowed down to get within that window, you're okay. It's time over distance. That's the biggest reason the speedometer really doesn't apply. And you know what, Larry? I got a news flash. If they had a speedometer, they would still push it right to the edge. Yeah. They would try to no pick question. up speed in those no segments question. and try to maximize the time over distance that you talked about. And Brad, I think it's been interesting what NASCAR has done, letting y'all see the times you run down pit road. And it's as much of a competition on pit road as it is on the track. You don't want your crew chief coming to you and saying, Kyle Busch went faster down pit road oh. than you. And every once in a while, you guys put up these graphics that say somebody was quicker down pit road than we were. And those really hurt our feelings. <laughs> so we, we come back the next week and we push a little bit harder. And that's always when we get a speed penalty. Hey, those graphics are not going away. All right, oh, get used you to it. guys. <laughs> My mom writes me after that, wants to know how I got beat down pit road. <laughs> Three laps to go in stage two. We've got 27 cars on the lead lap. Kyle Busch just went around 28th place. Ray Black Jr., last guy on the lead lap is Jeremy Clements in the 51 out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. At repairablevehicles.com Chevrolet trying to find some speed this afternoon in California. Hoping to hang on to closed, the lead lap. Closed. Always close pit road with two laps to go on a stage, Michael. That's what we heard there. Yeah, you stay on the lead lap, Adam. It just gives you a chance to make an adjustment. You're talking about Jerry McClemens having the chance to do that, maybe propel himself up to a top 20 finish. That's what that team's looking for. That's their budget. And they know that if they can do that, they will have uh, maximized their opportunity for the day. Paul Menard around his teammate for position. That's sixth on track. Come around to one lap to go in our second stage. 
you know, Logano inside of a second at one point behind Kyle Busch. Now it's north of two seconds, Michael. Yeah, I like what Brad said too. You know, John, Joey really had to charge uh, when this this uh, stage started to grab those positions back. He was down low on the track. He probably got the best of those Goodyear tires doing that, and now he's just sort of riding along. Figuring out what the car needs for an adjustment. Figuring out how he's going to attack pit road this time to not get a speeding penalty so he can go to work on Bush in the final stage. Kyle looking for a sweep. Won stage one after starting in the 16th position. Had a good pit stop. Restarted up front with one lap to go in that opening stage. Had a little shootout. And he was able to get it done on the restart. That's why you see that green and white checkered flag highlighting his name top of the Fox box. and. He's going to add a stage two victory to his win column right here. Kyle Busch, two for two today in Southern California. Joey Logano finishes second. Eric Jones is third. Kyle Larson is fourth. And the first series regular in stage two, Elliot Sadler. He's done it twice today, finishing inside the top five in each of our first two stages. Ty Dillon is sixth. Paul Menard, seventh. Cole Custer, Brennan Poole, William Byron also will get points here in stage two. So far, it's been the Kyle Busch Show in Fontana, California. Seventy two of one hundred fifty laps overall complete here in Fontana California stage two points for the series regulars Elliot Sadler tops in that category once again Cole Custer Brennan Poole William Byron also getting some points there in stage number two our top five Kyle Busch Joy Logano Eric Jones Kyle Larson we told you 
about Elliot Sadler, who got those six points in stage two. He's in the fifth position. These guys last pitted right there at the end of stage one, lap 31. No brainer, you're coming here. Fill that thing up. Give me some tires. Yeah, and if anybody says, what about two tires? Remind them what happened to J.J. Yaley. No. From first four. to 24th, <laughs> 25th in one lap. I want four tires, and I'm not leaving this pit road until I get them, as Larry McReynolds has been told a few times in the past by Dale Earnhardt. Give me four. Darn it. But here's the thing. You drivers want four tires every time anyway, right, Brad? Right, we do. Absolutely. <laughs> we want the car to drive the best it can drive. But sometimes, you know, you got to do things for strategy, but this is not the track to try that. Keep an eye on the 42 of Kyle Larson. That group has done a really good job on pit road last couple of weeks. We'll see if they can get it done here. Matt, they're headed your way. Kyle Busch, six wins here at Auto Club, chasing a seventh. He said just needs the car to turn a little bit better with the nose. They're going to add some tape as well as a track bar adjustment. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson in the 42. They went the wrong way too much on the last adjustment. He wants them to back it up a half. It just went too tight, Chris. Elliott Sadler's crew picked up two spots last visit to pit lane. He said he's got good long run speed, just the car a little too tight early in the run. A little track bar change. Vince. Joey Logano says the balance is pretty close, just wants to hold the speed longer. They're going to make the same adjustment as last time, just go a little further with the air pressure. And the 20 of Eric Jones, too tight for Jones. They want to help him out with some air pressure just to make that run a little bit longer. 18 team holding serve on pit road. There's that 42 group plus two. Brad highlighting there a tire that got away. That could be a penalty coming for somebody. And that looks like a brand new tire. They so never, <laughs> somebody's <laughs> got trouble here. This is not a good equation. Never got that thing on the car. It says RCR on the wheel. I don't know if you can see it spinning. So Oh, there he is. Getting word it's from Daniel Hemrick. Rookie had had such a good effort early on. Started on the front row. His car is now stuck on pit road. A tough break for the team. Well, let's take a chance now to dial up to 22. Joey Logano, this is Brad Keselowski in FS1 booth. You got a copy? I got you, Bradley. <laughs> it looks like you're having a uh, up and down day here. You started on the pole, led a lot of laps, fell back with the speeding penalty, and now you're back up in the top three. We want to know, do you have a shot at the win? Of course we do. Uh, got a good car here, real quick car in a short run. We showed that the last run there coming from, uh, I think we're 24th or so. Uh, need a little bit more longer at speed to run with the 18, and really just the gift cards in general, the 20 was a little bit better than us there at the end as well. So, uh, got to get a little bit better on the long run, but uh, if it comes down to a short run, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, we'll keep running hard here, see what we got. Hey, Joey, it's Michael. It was a lot of fun seeing you cut your way through the field. You're going to be heel to toe with Kyle Busch now. Hearing from pit road, Kyle Larson, too fast on pit road. He'll be going to the back, matched up right next to Kyle. Have you got the car to the count running all the way to the end? We'll wait and see, won't we? Time will tell. That's why you got to watch this stuff. <laughs> I think we'll do just that. Hope you have a good run to the checker. All right, thanks, guys. Have fun. That's a nice promo for us. So. Joey Logano is your teammate, and he called you Bradley. Michael and I are your teammates today. Can can we call you Bradley as well? Well, yeah, we do have a little running joke where I call him <laughs> Joseph, he calls me Bradley, but what happened here with the 42 on his pit road? You think when he flared out, maybe just hit a little bit too much speed coming into that last timing line? It possibly, but that was a perfect slide in the pit box. That actually helps the team out. Really well done. Speeding for Larson, too many men over the wall for Paul Menard. Some big penalties as we wrap up stage two.
Back in Fontana, let's take a look at how Joey Logano's spotter, Tab Boyd, helped him worry less with the Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. Behind that two, the clearing. The six has a little head of seat coming to you. Half back. Bottom is good. Bottom is good. A two is gone by two. The 21's only one out there. He's falling back. He's gone. The nine's only one up there. Nine's only one up there. Bottom is good. 21's off of the nine by one. Bottom is good. 21 in line with you. Clear low, still outside. That's our Liberty Mutual spotter coverage and a preview of what we'll hear tomorrow because Tab Boyd upstairs going to have to walk Joey Logano from 35th in the Auto Club 400. Check out this view from the spotter stand. That's why Tab Boyd was able to give Joey Logano all those details about where the other cars were. And Joey obviously likes a lot of talk uh, from his spotter when he's racing up through the traffic like he was. That kind of made me dizzy. All those things he was saying. Does, does your spotter talk to you like that, Brad? Absolutely. You know, we talk about double duty, and, and sometimes I think what a lot of people forget is double duty usually means that you keep your support staff. So a lot of times it's your same pit crew that you'll run on Sunday uh, in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, but also your same spotter. And those relationships and, and uh, trying to keep the communication active uh, can really be helped by running both series. Cars to watch on the restart. Paul Menard. Daniel Henrik, Kyle Larson, all penalty cars on that last cycle of stops, restarting outside the top 25. We'll begin our final stage. Kyle Busch, the race leader, outside lane, inside of him, Joey Logano in the 22. We're green once again in Fontana. In the last restart, we saw the inside lane take the lead with a big push, but no push here for Joey Logano. What about that nine team? William Byron up into the top five. See if he can put together a strong run to the checker. Six series regulars inside the top 10 as we restart here in our final stage. Big hiccup for the 48 of Brennan Poole. Eric Jones aggressive early on. Look at that top five all tied together. We talk about the restarts here at Auto Club Speedway. You can see how intense they are. And Joe Legano is going to clear him for the lead. You just can't keep those two apart. <laughs> Legano and Kyle Busch. It was only a matter of time, Adam. <laughs> Wonder if everything's great. Bet everything's great. I got it. Look at Byron. This kid's been really impressive, hasn't he? Just being able to have, see improvement lap after lap, and that's what we're seeing in today. Look at Eric Jones up the middle, three wide. This is what makes Don Fontana fun, guys. Three wide restarts. Do you see those cars bouncing around down that box straightaway? Four different lines there through turns three and Whoa. four. Here comes Cole Custer to the inside. Big momentum for the double zero. The white red car down to the inside. Rookie from California trying to get back to the top five. It's a bit up. of a home race for Cole yeah. Custer. You're up 58 miles south of here. Won a lot of races in California as a kid, but never raced on the big stage at Auto Club. Trying to make the most of it here today. Custer was able to climb back in line. Look at the big push by Justin Algar up the middle. Wow, the that's cool. Ryan Reed, that's still awesome. Still in the middle, still in the middle. 98 on the bottom, 23 up top, still in the middle. And, and Kyle Larson's trying outside, to dig through all this. There, Four wide. I think they might have been five wide. How big of a mess is that? Holy cow. Larson being shown 15th, a couple of laps after he restarted outside the top 25. So he's made up at least a dozen spots since we last went green. Larson down to the very bottom of the track. That's Justin Algar in the red seven up the middle. This is crazy great racing, guys. Gosh, I love the racing. It, it almost looks like a video game. Look at all these cars. You will not see a better race all year than today with the Xfinity Series. And five, ten. Oh, wow, Kyle Larson drove it down in turn three. Now, how does he do that? It looked like he's going 20 mile an hour faster than the competition. Meanwhile, wow. Logano's got the lead, but he can't get away. Kyle Busch staying right there. That's left of your screen. On the right side, Larson outside of Allgaier. Ryan Reed is there. Spencer Gallagher, Paul Menard. And the battle for fifth left side of your screen. Couple of young guns, Brennan Poole in that blue and black 48, racing outside of the double zero of Cole Custer. Caution is out, fourth one of the day here at Auto Club. It's for the four of Ross Chastain. And I saw Chastain all the way, almost off the track in turn four. 
looks like he might have got a little bit of help right here. Yeah, I saw a tire mark on the side of Yaley's car, and that contact's probably enough to cut that left rear tire down, huh? Absolutely. Really sharp whenever you get hit with the right rear of another car. That's where the exhaust comes out of the, the right side of the car. It's very sharp, and when it hits a tire, it shreds it. You can see all the debris that's on the racetrack now. NASCAR had to throw the game. Chastain, talented driver out of Florida, nearly won in the truck series for you a few years ago at Phoenix. Problems here today, 68 laps remain. The widest selection of parts have never been easier to shop. Check out eBay Motors to find the right part for your ride. Find it, add it, get it fast. 83 laps down, 67 to go here at Auto Club Speedway. It has been a crazy ride so far. Like <laughs> well, th these restarts where they're yeah. five and six wide, not to mention mistakes made by guys that's been up there leading laps. Let's see how it's played out. Joey Logano started on the pole today, and right from the go, this is what we saw, four, five wide racing. Yeah, and what you're going to see here, you're going to see rookie William Byron get a little bit loose up off turn four, gets in the wall. That's the second week in a row he's hit the wall early in the race. Matt Tiff had a little bit of problem, and this set up some strategy early on because this caution came out right before the end of stage one. Everybody came to pit road, including the leader, Joey Logano, for four fresh tires, busted for speeding on pit road. Uh-oh, so he had to go to the back, but, and Kyle Busch would go on to win stage one, but this is what we saw very quickly. Joey, like a man on a mission, charged all the way through the field. He passed like 150 cars. <laughs> From 35th to second during that stage. Kyle Larson had a little issue on pit road and we saw a little bit of this. Daniel Hemrick, Hemrick lost his tire. So a little bit of issues on pit road and check this out. Psych. <laughs> this was this was right now. We have a few takers. We had only run four laps. There you see Justin Allgaier, the seven, Ryan Reed, the 16, coming to get four fresh tires, but everybody else for the most part 
after only four laps since the restart, stayed out. Yeah, I mean, we could talk all day about what we saw Joey Logano do, Kyle Busch dominating this race, but I think the restarts and how crazy it's been, I mean, that's the one thing that stands out to me. And with all the mistakes, Shannon, we know there's at least, whether it's under caution or under green, at least one more trip to pit road. Okay, so let's go back upstairs to Adam Alexander, Michael Waltrip, and Bradley. That's right, Bradley, <laughs> and his teammate Joseph is leading this race. That would be Joey Logano. When Shannon came to me before the race, I said, you know, drivers at Auto Club, they're always smiling because you love this place. And now I know why. How entertaining has this been? Gosh, I mean, the only thing better than driving is being up here in the booth and being able to see it both on TV and looking out the window. Phenomenal experience. This is one of the best racetracks on the circuit. You you, this is must see. You got to watch this. I race. couldn't believe what I saw Kyle Larson do when he went into turn three. It looked like he never let off. I think he passed five or six cars in one corner. What an amazing move. Could he get back into this thing? The restart after the speeding penalty, he was motivated in that 42. And look, Ross Chastain in the four, he thought he was in the bottom. Paul Menard went under him. Larson just weaving his way through the traffic. Talking about having fun, Larson is doing it. How many cars did he pass? Turns out Kyle himself, he lost count when he was making that move. How many cars did I pass that one corner? <laughs> Probably like six or seven. It was pretty awesome. I wasn't going to say anything, but since you were giggling. I passed like seven cars right there, it felt like. <laughs> See, the driver's having fun, laughing about uh, the experience they're having out there on the track. He's going to restart 12th. Paul Menard, who also got penalized on that last cycle, going to restart 13th. And some guys up in the top 10 having great days. William Byron, Brennan Poole, Cole Custer, Darrell Wallace Jr., and Matt Tift, who had that early spin. How about Tift? He just has recovered great from that early spin. And then we've got some strategy that's playing into things. Justin Algar coming to pit road, getting those fresh tires. We saw how important fresh tires were earlier when Yaley started up front and fell back through the field. So it'll be interesting to see how much progress Algar can make back up through the field. Now, we said that guys have rallied since the restart that had penalties. We talked about Paul Menard, Kyle Larson. Haven't mentioned the 21 of Daniel Hemrick. What's their story after that tire got away, Matt? Really, it was a perfect storm for Daniel Hemrick. Now, when he pitted, he pitted at an angle deep in his box. Everything was fine on the right side. When the changers came to the left side, they took the left front off. They put the new one on, but when the changer went to hit the, the stud to, to tighten up that lug, it locked up and jammed. The back continued on like nothing was wrong. The jackman dropped it, not realizing the front wasn't done, and there and hence was the problem. They pitted and took on four tires just a few moments ago. He's back in 27. Chris? Well, two laps before the caution, Elliot Sadler radioed to the team, I got into the wall. Now, he said the car felt okay, but there was a lot of debate on whether they should come to pit lane or not. They just felt not enough cars came, so they're rolling the dice here, hoping that car's okay. Vince? We told you before the race, keep an eye on that nine of 19-year-old William Byron after finishing fourth last week at Phoenix. Says the car's just a little tight center landing, but the exit is okay. They're pretty close with the balance, been pretty pleased with it, and got to give a shout out to spotter Earl Barbin, normally Jimmy Johnson spotter on the cup side. He has been a big asset for this young driver here today, helping him pick which lane he needs to be in to help him get around this track the fastest. In the last 24 hours, we have just watched William Byron get better and better at racing this place. And we're hearing from our pit reporters a couple of strategy thoughts we should throw out there. Top 19 stayed out here under our fourth caution. Jeremy Clements, the first of those to pit from 20th. He, Allgaier, Ryan Reed, Blake Cook, some of the drivers we'll be watching on the restart, as well as Daniel Hemrick, who will restart 27th. Matt Yoakum talked about him a moment ago. Well, it's a busy day of racing here on FS1. A lot of NASCAR from Southern California. And when we wrap up with round five for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, it's round 12 for Monster Energy Supercross. We're live in Detroit tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time at Ford Field. And it will be Ralph Shaheen and Jeff Emig with the call. We look forward to that. Here are the points. Ryan Dungey going for four straight titles is out front of Eli Tomac. In my hometown, Detroit, I believe it's at Ford Field, too. It is, yes. That'll be good fun to watch after this race. Michael, your daughter, Macy, at the University of Michigan. Yeah, we've got a strong Michigan ties Rats up here. Rats the Michigan booth. guy. We're going to Michigan next. We look forward to that. It all follows our eBay Motors post-race show live from Fontana, California. Cleanup complete of our fourth caution. You know, Joey Logano, the race leader here. We talked about William Byron and the job he's doing in that nine car. Look at Brendan Poole and Cole Custer. Custer's been up in the top ten all day long, and Poole has just gotten better and better all day long as well. 
Some good young talent racing up there against the Monster Energy guys. Wow, that's an amazing stat. Elliot Sadler almost has double the stage points of anyone else in this field throughout the off. season. That's that's really impressive. He really wanted that stage one win to get that playoff point to take that thing throughout the playoffs. That's very important to make sure you have those points when we start racing in the playoffs. He has two playoff points, winning stage one and stage two in the season opener at Daytona. And the only other series regulars to accumulate playoff points would be Justin Allgaier and Ryan Reed. Reed, who won down in Central Florida to open the year. And then also Justin Allgaier, who won last week. They each have five playoff points, two for Elliott Sadler winning that stage one and stage two. That's basically seeding in the playoffs. And mm -hmm. you can lean on those things all throughout. So. These drivers are racing so hard because they know how important those points could be come playoff time this fall. Speaking of racing hard, what do you think we're going to see on this restart, guys? <laughs> the last few times uh, for the leaders, Kyle Busch outside hasn't really worked out. Now Joey Logano's on the outside. It should be really interesting. Behind him, Ty Dillon, the rookie William Byron, row three, Brennan Poole, Cole Custer. We get the restart with 62 laps to go. Byron to the bottom to make it three wide into one. Can he stick down there and grab the lead from those cup veterans? Oh, I think he might. I think he's got it. Oh, here oh comes it's going to be really close coming off a of two. Look at that momentum on the high side. He left Kyle a little bit of room there. Bush Counts able to advantage. grab the race lead on the restart. And we've seen that the last few times, Adam, where the bottom lane has grabbed the lead on the restart. Look at the bottom lane. Paul Menard, Kyle Larson both continuing their drive back to the front as we crank it up in Southern California. Very bottom, right to the middle. able to grab the top spot on the restart. Joey Logano not going away, and with 60 to go, he's trying to get the double deuce back out front. Clear off of turn two, crossover from Bush. Oh, this is going to be good down into turn three. I'm not quite so sure he was clear there, Adam, but he took it anyway. <laughs> and look at him, guys. Well, off the racing surface on the bottom, trying to grab that spot box from Logano. Can he clear him? This is tight for two guys that have a history. Still five back, still down there at the wheel. Still down there. You see the side draft working back and forth on the two cars, pulling one forward and one back. You just try to use your right front to stall out the left rear of the car you're racing, but Joey, Joey has the short run speed here, guys. He's been really good. We heard him on the radio earlier when we interviewed him. He loves his short run speed, but Kyle's a little bit faster on the long run, so we'll have to see how this one plays out. And the car that's just gotten better since the start, he faded early as the two there on the bottom of Paul Menard. He's made some adjustments. That car's got speed again. Passed a lot of cars since he had too many men over the wall on that last pit stop. Settles in behind William Byron and Eric Jones, who are side by side for third. Over on the right side, Kyle Larson had that speeding issues, worked his way back to the top 10. He's eighth behind points leader Elliott Sadler. Look at Bernard running on the bottom, is able to pull alongside of William Byron, racing for the fourth spot. Lead for Logano a half a second, and with 58 laps to go, we'll remind you, everyone going to have to come down pit road one more time. Cannot make it on fuel. Oh, 
Custer doing some positive things in that double zero. Looking to the outside of the blue one of Elliott Sadler. And Brennan Poole hanging in the top ten, looking for his second in a row in that category. It's just been a bit of an off day for Justin Algar. He got that big win at Phoenix, but he hasn't really shown any speed. So I think crew chief Jason Burdett, they decided to roll the dice. They came to pit road and got fresher tires. And guys, he's making it work. He's driven up to the 13th position. That's Bubba Wallace that's running 12. He's going to dive to the bottom. And his Brant Chevy going to make easy work of Wallace. How far can this seven car go on those fresher tires? Oh, big wreck. Front Hold stretch. Hard. He turned back down under you, don't you? According to the spotter, there was contact. Yeah, he hooked your left rear. He turned down on you. You were fine. Second week in a row, the two oh, cars crashed. Fire. And yeah, on fire. Now to get out of that thing as he heads down to turn one. That's probably an oil fire from the radiator being knocked out. Window net is down. Menard will climb out. He was scored in the fourth position when he hit the wall. Make sure he gets out okay. Then we'll take a look at the replay, see what happened. Heard the spotter traffic about some potential contact before he went into the wall. Now the spotter called it as... Car on the outside cut down to try and get back underneath us and hooked, hooked our left rear, turned us back right. Maybe a misjudgment by Eric Jones. Is that what, uh, what we're seeing or did Menard come up? Oh, looks like Paul left him a little bit of room. And I don't think Eric was anticipating that Paul was going to leave him a lane. And he tried to cross back underneath him, anticipating that Paul was going to slide up in front of him. And when that happened, there was not. Him watch him on the exit. On board with Jones. Yeah, you're right, Brad. I Paul think that's, was. It's just a racing. I don't think there was anything intentional there. Here. Sometimes these type of things just happen. You know, everybody's. It's, a, it's like a school of fish sometimes when you're racing like this and you, you kind of take for granted that uh, where that other guy's going to be. And when he makes a move that you don't expect, things get off timing sometimes and we run into each other. Well, we heard Eric Jones or we heard Paul Menard's opinion of what happened. He said that was dumb. Obviously, Paul left room for the for the 20 to take the outside. Be interesting to hear what the 20's opinion was. That's Eric Jones. Glad to see this fire goes out. That's never fun. That was my bad, I guess. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. He knows closing rate's going to be insane right there. Good, bud. Check it off. You know he tried to slide us. Well, actually, he didn't. But, you know, that's just the job of the spotter and the team. That's a coach. You know, they're coaching Eric Jones. Yep. They're saying, get that behind you. we got a race to go win. It's like throwing an interception. You go back to the, the bench, and uh, the coach tells you, don't worry, it's going to be all right. <laughs> Wasn't your fault. Wasn't your fault. <laughs> I think you threw the ball. <laughs> Hey, yeah. so you're not in your fuel window, but you do have a couple of sets of tires. Pit here or stay out? What do you think? I think pit. But okay. It's a bad break for Justin Algar. We were just talking about him racing his way through the field. And Daniel Hamrick. Both of him uh, and Daniel Hamrick were up 10 to 12 spots on this last restart. Now they're down one set of tires, and they're in a little bit of trouble here, guys. Ryan Reed also in that category. Leaders are coming your way, Matt. Second on the running order, Kyle Busch brings the 18 to his pit. The car has great long run speed. He doesn't want to hurt that, but they're going to make an adjustment across the back, trying to also help the balance in general. Vince. The 22 of Joey Logano, just a little bit tight at the two third part of the corner and uh, building tighter as the run goes. Also a lot of debris on the grill, so they're gonna clean that off as well. How about Eric Jones in the 20? They've been uh, a little too snug for his liking, but they're close on the balance. No major changes there. Chassis adjustment for the nine of William Byron. He said, I don't need to be freer, that's for sure. A four tire change for the nine of Byron and a close race off pit road. Outstanding day for the rookie. And as we look at the battle off the pit lane, problems for the 22 oh, of no. Joey Logano. Plus Red one for... Right up. Everybody at once. Put the tire down and lift the car up. They're not happy right now, as you can tell. Bam. Oh, looks like the jack fell out from underneath the car. And now they can't get it lifted back up. Second time they've had problems today. Logano's led the most laps from the pole. 48 circuits out front. Speeding now earlier. they're still stuck on pit road. This is not good. They're in a lot of trouble. They might lose a lap. So the whole left side of the car is down on the ground, and you can't get a jack underneath it to raise it up. So as you can see, NASCAR allowed them to bring a second jack out to try to get the back of the car up to get the first jack in on the left side. 
The cars are exiting. And this definitely damaged the car. You can see the skirts are bent. So the car is up. They'll get the tires on. And he should stay on the lead lap. Just barely here. Kyle Busch, the race leader. Just over 50 laps to go at Auto Club Speedway. That's a me. I think when it comes to restarts here, you just have to be aggressive, but also pick a lane that nobody else is in. It's really hard to be aggressive here. You gotta really time those starts right uh, to get a really good run on the guy ahead of you. You know, the top always has a huge run down the, down the straightaway, uh, but the bottom gets the big advantage going down the middle of the corner. So you kinda gotta pick your poison where your car's been better all day is typically where you like to go. A lot of things to think about when you come to Auto Club Speedway and Southern California. It's NASCAR Goes West, presented by Toyota, round number three. We were in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago, last weekend in the desert, in Avondale, Arizona, at Phoenix Raceway. Aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Joey Logano was the race leader, came down pit road, and the car fell off the jack. We're right here. We did it once already. Do it again. Copy that. That's the attitude you want from your wheel man, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, he did get up to first in about 60 laps the last time. And he has about 50 to go this time, so a little less time. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> What's this conversation like? You know Crew Chief Craig Irwin well? Well, <laughs> I think they have the beat button ready. Uh, no, Greg's a great guy, but, uh, you know, this is a, a very frustrating situation for the team. Uh, whenever you drop a car off the jack and, and you were the leader, uh, those are things that uh, you just can't have to win races. Logano going to restart in the 26th position, a long way to go in just over 50 laps. And Larry, when Austin Dillon won this race last year, made his final pit stop 
at lap 101. 49 laps to go. These guys pitted at lap 96, 54 laps to go, but better fuel mileage with the low downforce package. Any thought about a potential run to the checkers here should it stay green? Well, you and I have been working together way too long. I was thinking the same thing. We know these cars are getting better fuel mileage, but I guess the, the driver and car I want to focus on is what you're seeing right there, Greg Irwin. They're at the back of the pack. To me, it would be a no-brainer when we know we're one to go. Come pack that 22 car full of fuel, and absolutely you should be able to go to the end if this thing goes green. We saw last year's race. Some fuel mileage came into play. Kyle Busch blew a tire on the last lap. Could be very similar here today. And tires could play a role. A lot of the guys up front have two sets left. And we know everybody, or likely most, are going to have to pit one more time. And, and certainly will come if we get a caution. But Ryan Reed, Justin Allgaier have made an extra pit stop. They only have one set of tires left, I believe. So we'll continue to follow that. They want this thing to stay green. Matt, what's up with you? Adam Paul Menard has been checked and released. So walk us through the incident that came off of turn four. Do you feel like he should have checked up or it was just one of those racing things? I'm not sure. You know, we, we had a really good car. Uh, Justin made a good call the last, uh, our last pit stop and we got uh, uh, too many men over the wall. So we had to come from the back, but um, yeah, I'm not, I don't, he, I don't know if he tried to push me or just crossing over, but um, definitely had a brain fart, he did. Um, yeah, cars is really good. We, I thought we we're all weekend long, I thought we we're at least a third place car. Um, and, you know, the leaders weren't getting away from us the last run. We we're actually catching on them so, a little bit. So just, uh, it's, uh, you know, really proud of Richmond Water Heaters, Menards, everybody on this number two uh, Xfinity car. Um, I'm not sure what my next one is. I think it's Pocono, so it's a while. A ways to go, but uh, we learned a lot for tomorrow, and that's all I can ask for. Good luck tomorrow. You know, we keep stats for everything. That's the first time in 2017 we've had a brain fart on the air. So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll go ahead and cross that one off the list. Eric Jones, you saw there in the third position. Kyle Busch, William Byron out in front of him. Brad, always good to have you here this weekend. Going to be with us in a couple of weeks' time at Texas Motor Speedway. Love to hear about what's going on with the foundation anytime you come up. Well, thank you very much. And, you know, it's uh, a privilege to be up here in the booth and to do uh, the things that we get to do. And I think it's made possible by the men and women that uh, make uh, great sacrifices in our military and beyond. And so uh, we have a couple great initiatives with our foundation that we're working on. One here is with uh, Ken Fisher, the Fisher House, which is... Uh, uh, a huge deal for us. Uh, you know, they take care of our, our wounded servicemen and servicewomen and their families while they're in the, the hospital trying to get better. Uh, but also our foundation, the Checker Flag Foundation, does uh, a lot of other things with the, the PBA, uh, a partner of ours, uh, where we just try to look out and, and send the elevator back down. I've been very, very fortunate to, to be here uh, to make it as a Spring Cup driver, and that's made possible by a lot of great friends like you and Michael Adam, uh, and a lot of family that's made support and, and done all those things for me, uh, but also by my team and, and family and friends. So I just want to say thank you. And the foundation is uh, my way of kind of giving back. So we have a lot of fun with that. And you sure do a great appreciate job. Appreciate a chance to talk about it and talk about those that uh, we care about. Yeah, you sure do a great job. And your celebrations, the respect for the flag, the things you do, uh, not only for the foundation, but outside of the car and how much you appreciate uh, our armed forces and the men and women that have paid the ultimate price and the sacrifices they've made for us to live our dreams. Uh, certainly respect and appreciate your uh, your effort there. Thank you very much, Michael. And, and like I said, I just I feel so fortunate to be a race car driver. And I mean, this is a great day. I mean, it's a beautiful day here in California, an amazing race. And we're just so fortunate to, to get to see and do these things. And uh, it's my way of saying thank you is through the foundation. Looking at Eric Jones, we heard from Paul Menard, a little damage it looks like on the front end of that 20 car after the contact, Vince. It, actually, uh, it is a, a hole in the grill. They've spotted it to, from the spotter stand, and uh, they've told Eric that uh, they're going to have to deal with it for now. The car is going to be different handling for sure until then on the next pit stop. He, they believe it's just a matter of putting some tape over that hole that's going to uh, take care of that issue. But in the meantime, it's going to be a handful for Eric Jones. Vince, I look at our top 10 now with 49 laps to go, and we know things can change quickly at this racetrack, but some series regulars who are in line for some very positive things today. William Byron, the rookie, is second. And then you go back to Brennan Poole looking for his second consecutive top 10 finish. He's sixth. Darrell Wallace Jr. 
if he finishes inside the top 10, be the fourth time in a row, he's never done that in his career. He's seventh right now. Allgaier has worked his way to eighth. Ryan Reed is ninth. And Spencer Gallagher working on a career best. That team tested here a couple of weeks ago. If he can finish in the top 10, it would be the first of his career. And surprising as I look at this, Chris, Elliot Sadler's 14th right now, about as bad as he's been since the start of this race. Yeah, and it sounds like Elliot Sadler's going to come back to pit lane before we go green. The team had a slow stop the last time here, lost eight spots oh. in pit lane, mainly because of uh, problems with lug nuts on the right front. So since they gave up the track position during that last stop, they are going to come back, fill that car up, and then they think they can make it to the end. Yeah, and I, and I think about everybody else, Chris, a lot of caution laps here. That is just aiding you in the fuel mileage category. Larry McReynolds is cheering this decision. Yes, he is. He loves it, right? He does love it. <laughs> 48 laps to go. We continue under caution. You see the debris here down the back stretch. And, and what that is, real quick, that is foam from the four car that we saw earlier when he blew his left rear tire. And what happens is these cars have big foam blocks in the sides of the car. And those are energy absorbing blocks. So that if you take a hit to the door, uh, it's a little bit safer for the driver and, and keeps from penetrating the cockpit with so much force to, to really just, you know, try to help the drivers out and not get hurt in big hits. But what happens is when tar, uh, cars blow out tires sometimes, uh, the tires come apart and they actually tear those blocks out and it makes a huge mess. So that's nothing to worry about. You can run over that and it won't hurt the car. It's just foam. Uh, but that's what you're seeing on the track as Elliott Sadler pits and a few others to top off with fuel. Yeah, most of the front runners staying on track but those guys outside the top 10 electing to come down pit road and as you said here's elliot sadler chris yeah gonna be a real quick stop here just gonna put some tape on the grill gonna fill this car up and sadler's only concern today is fire off speed saying the car a little bit tight but good over the long run it's well the 22 joey logano has got to come as well remember the uh, car fell off the jack they believe there's a little bit of left side damage they're going to take a look at that but they're going to give joey a fresh tear off put a little tape on the uh, grill as well talked about it anyway but decided not to put the tape on the grill just gave him a fresh tear off and some extra fuel blake cook brennan gone brandon jones some of the other drivers that elected to come down pit road get fuel here with 47 laps to go Based on what we saw here a season ago, when you think about where we've been with fuel mileage so far in 2017 compared to 2016, I would say for sure all those drivers that just pitted can go the distance if this thing stays green. And it has had kind of a long green run feel today. And th what these guys just did, they bought insurance. <laughs> That's what they just did right here. That little bit of insurance. These leaders up here can probably make it but they're going to have to slow the pace down a little bit at times. And, and we've seen Joey Logano. He was able to drive from the back and get to second or third, and he kind of stalled out right there. If it goes long green and he gets to second or third and Kyle Busch has to slow down to make fuel mileage, he might have a shot at this still. He could really put the pressure on. A call out to some guys that are having solid runs through the strategy. Ryan Sieg up inside the top 15. J.J. Yaley, we saw him stay out earlier. He's 17th. And Garrett Smithley, he took a wave around. And he's in the top 20 now. It'll be interesting to see if these young guys can get their best finishes of the year. Smithley, top 10 run at Daytona to open the year for J.D. Motorsports. Restart, 46 laps to go. We're green again in Fontana. And Kyle Busch was the leader, but he saw he lost the lead the last few times to the bottom lane. So he picks the bottom lane. He's going to lose it to William Byron, who got a great push to Kyle Larson. Well, just remember, Byron got the lead from the bottom, or almost got it, so he's really good on these restarts. And Kyle, all the way back to third place, is Bush, and here comes Larson for the lead. The other Kyle, bright orange, 42, Larson on point as he goes around William Byron, bringing Kyle Bush with him. You see Kyle's car sparking a lot. It's dragging. He might have low air, and that might be the reason why he's struggling on these restarts. But boy, does he have that long run speed. We'll have to see how this shakes out as they get running. Remember, Larson had a speeding penalty earlier. He's rebounded, just like Joey Logano did, all the way back to the front. How would you like to be William Byron? You think he passed Kyle, and they say Kyle's on the inside. It's like, how many Kyles are there out here? <laughs> well, there are two, and they're both all over you. Did you say Logano rebounded? He's doing it again, Michael. He is inside the top 10, two laps into this green flag run. And going for eight. <laughs> At purple six is Darrell Wallace Jr. Outside of him, Spencer Gallagher. The bottom of three. On the apron. I love that. Ooh, the 23 is going to be there on exit. Yeah, this is where things get hairy. We saw that earlier with Paul Menard and Eric Jones. He used that momentum to drive all the way around Logano and bringing the six 
A bubble Looks Wallace like the 18 might have just hit the wall. Replay right of your screen, right in front of Brennan Poole. Hello. Caution is oh, out. Big Look rack. at this. Big hit for the rookie out. Cole Custer. Another fire. Cole Custer top of one and two here. Sixth caution of the day. Custer was in the 14th position when he hit the wall. I don't think he'd been outside of the top 10 most all day. Back in 14th. Good to see him get out of that like a hard hit. Entered the day 12th in points. He hasn't had a lot of luck in the first five races of his rookie campaign. Average running position today, 7.3. To your point, Michael, spent a lot of time in the top 10, gets outside the top 10, into the wall. I'm still a big Cole Custer fan. A lot of speed in that car. He's had a rough start to the season. Let's see what happened here. Oh, that's not a good angle to hit the wall at. I've been there. Obviously, it already gotten turned when we picked up the shot into the corner. Again, you see another oil fire. Whenever you take these big hits with the front end of the car, all of it, the oil is contained in that front radiator and it explodes and easily ignites on fire. Wow, you can see just head on into the wall for the double zero car. This caution really good for Joey Logano, who had made up all those positions. Look at that wow. impact as he comes sliding through the bottom right corner of your there screen. Were two cars underneath him there, but that wreck could not almost see happened the contact. On the straightaway, Brad. Yes. He, he went end to end. Look, top of your screen. Oh, the oh, car went down on him. Double against fence, double against fence, double against fence. Hurry, 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 hurry. Yellow foul, yellow foul, yellow foul. Yellow Couldn't foul, tell what foul, car it right. was. A car moved down on Custer and turned him hard into the outside wall. Couldn't tell who it was, like Brad said, but that's what happened. There was contact. Good to see him get out of that race car. He's done for the day. He'll take the mandatory ride to the infield care center, get checked out, go through the concussion protocol if deemed necessary. Caution waving for the sixth time today. And now everybody in their window, let's come down oh. pit road. Some say yes, some say no. Kyle Busch stays on the racetrack. Kyle Larson and others heading down the pit lane, Matt. And look for Larson, even though they have sticker tires in their box, they were talking about just going for fuel only on the 42, but they've waved that off and called an audible going for four tires, looking at the fact that the 18 stayed out. Vince. The 20 of Eric Jones, they're going to fix that grill that we told you about with the hole in it. Otherwise, just four tires and fuel for the 20 of Eric Jones. Also, the nine of William Byron came in as well. A little too free on exit for Byron. They're going down on the track bar a half round to give him a little more security and the tape on the grill as well. Could very well be the final pit stops of the day for these drivers who have now got fresh tires for the stretch run. And oh, by the way, Joey Logano stayed on the racetrack. He'll restart third. No problem getting back to the front for drive 22. What a roller coaster ride he's had today.
everyone here, guys. Got a fast race car. Stay up beat no matter what. Get the best finish we can. Go for a win. That's my bad, I guess. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Cut the tire down and lift the car up. How many cars did I pass that one corner? Probably like six or seven. It was pretty awesome. We are under caution here at Auto Club Speedway with 40 laps to go. It's been quite a ride for a lot of these drivers. We've seen them start in the back, the front. You're not surprised that Kyle Busch stayed out. Well, I'm not. You know, when they last pitted, they were definitely outside the fuel window, and they only had two laps on their tires right there. We had 14 drivers stay out. I think we've had enough cautions now that these guys feel comfortable they can make it to the end. And uh, the 22 of Joey Logano, what a day for him. He's had trouble on pit road twice, has made his way from the back of the field twice. <laughs> that looks now... like my heart rate when I was a crew chief. <laughs> you, you see right there, maybe a W stands for win, yeah. make, making it to victory lane. But you see the penalty there for speeding back on lap 31 and the jack issue on lap 96. So definitely an up and down day for that 22 car. I just got this little note that said Logano up 57 positions since the start of this race. That'll pay That's off tomorrow. Cool. He's got to start at the rear tomorrow. That's too. right. And 18 and 22 restart very close to each other, Adam. That's Joseph that's up 57 <laughs> positions. Thank you very much, Shannon. I can't wait till he sees the replay what, of this. What do you think about your teammate, Bradley? I mean, so far, so good battling back from that adversity. He's got a chance. He's got a lot of short run speed, and he still has some tires left in the pit. So if another yellow comes out, he can take advantage of it. I don't think we're done seeing yellows in this race. <laughs> it's just either. a little suspicion of mine, guys. This so. has been an up and down day for everybody in the field, it seems like. Daniel Hemrick has rebounded now into the top five after that terrible pit stop earlier. Ryan Sieg from the back, he's up to six right now. So there's a lot of great stories developing as the laps wind down. Under 40 laps to go. Some guys said, I want tires. Others said, I want track position. That means the racing is going to be really, really good. Under caution for the sixth time, 39 to go. Kyle Busch leading in California. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series zooms into the Golden State for some racing Fontana style. Will hometown hero Jimmy Johnson repeat and take the checkered flag? Or will it be fellow California native Kevin Harvey? Find out tomorrow. Coverage begins at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1 and continues at 3 p.m. on Fox. Big Sunday in NASCAR in Southern California. All starts with race day, 1.30 Eastern time. Matt Yoakum, what do you have? Well, I've caught up with Cole Custer. He's been checked and released, so you're confirming that it was the 39 of Sieg that hooked you on the front straightaway? Yeah, we just got back there uh, from a pit, bad pit stop there. I don't know exactly what happened, but just trying to work our way up there. We had a really fast Haas animation Ford Mustang and just, I mean, I tried to side draft him coming off four, and then I probably got into his left rear a little bit. Not, not bad at all, and then he just right reared us going into turn one, and that was about it. Just... Uh, 
it's pretty much just a joke, but it's, uh, it is what it is. We had an awesome car. I thought we could have had a top three finish, maybe even fought for a win there, but just got our day ended by uh, what Ryan C. Broken Jack Post snowballed his day into what you're seeing now on the monitor. Yeah, it went from fourth to 22nd in that cycle of pit stops, Matt. And unfortunately for the second consecutive week, disappointment for Cole Custer, who had a fast race car. So Kyle Busch leads. Justin Allgaier, a lot of time outside the top 10 today, but has worked his way into the second position through some strategy. Matt Tift, early spin, is third. Logano, who's been to the back twice today, is fourth. Ryan Sieg, we talked about, going to restart sixth. Right behind Daniel Hemrick, who's fifth. Ryan Reed, Brendan Gaughan, Michael Annette, Brandon Jones, all series regulars in the top ten. Yeah, the series regulars are standing up for themselves late in this race. It's Augar on the outside. And that seven car has just raced himself in position with some pit strategy to get a great finish here, just like he did last week. Last week, he was a story. Today, he's trying to work his way into a position to be just that. And by the way, Adam, that yellow stripe on the seven car of Justin Algar, that's a corn stripe. That's what that is. Not a rookie. He, it's a corn stripe. He's got corn on his car. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. What's up, Chris? Well, more challenges for Elliot Sadler. He said after that last pit stop, the floor, the false floor in that car has come loose. And he said, it's a very weird sensation. It moves around under my feet. I'm having a tough time with it, guys. All right, Elliot Sadler going to restart 12th. Of the drivers that came down, got a pit stop at lap 108, four tires. Brennan Poole tops in that category, restarts 15th. Kyle Larson is 16th. Keep an eye on William Byron, who's back in the 18th position. Ty Dillon back there as well. But they've got fresh tires, could be coming to the front. How many times have we put those Ganassi cars in the top of the guys racing off pit road? Doing a great job with the 48 and the 42 down there with their pit stops and their pit work. Kyle Busch, inside lane, 36 to go as we return to the green flag. Kyle Busch picking the inside lane with a push from Joey Logano on the restart. We've seen Kyle just doesn't have the short run speed, but he's got great long run speed. He needs this race to stay green, I think, to be able to win it. Look at Logano, looking outside off the corner. Bush is going to clear him. Algar back to third. He's getting a push from Daniel Hemrick. And there's Matt Tift after a spin early, racing in the top five. Great job by Tift. Great job by Hemrick, who had the problems with that uncontrolled tire. There's Elliot Sadler. Chris talked about him. And he's trying to fight off the guys with fresh tires. That orange 42 is Kyle Larson. He's trying to rally back again. Look Three at this. wide racing throughout the field, guys. Look at this pack of cars. That's Ryan Sieg just ahead. There's a battle for the lead. Kyle Busch has led 53 laps today. Took stage one and stage two. But Logano, who started on the pole, has led 48 laps himself, battling back from tough times and trying to get the top spot again as we go three wide. Look at Blake Cook in that 11 car, trying to work his way up toward the top 10. So oh. that, that shove, Ryan C gave Larson into the corner. Wow, three wide again down the straightaway. This car's everywhere. This is what California Speedway has always been about. And it's also what the California freeways are like. You just <laughs> go where they're not. And that's what these drivers are doing. Kyle's doing a good job holding Joey off right here. Joey's trying all kinds of different lanes. Not quite as much faster as we've seen him earlier on the short run. I do see there's some damage on the left side of the 22 car from when they dropped it off the jacks so that might be holding them back a little bit, Michael. That was Larson around tip for fifth. Larson on fresher tires, back in the top five. Look at Eric Jones strong down on the bottom of the track. He's going to pull past Blake Cook and alongside Bubba Wallace. Jones, another one of those drivers on fresher tires, had to pit to repair the damage on the nose after he got into Menard. Another three for one there. There are so many battles going on around this track. I just feel bad for the camera guys. I mean, <laughs> we need about six different boxes. Director Jeremy Green says, oh my, where are we going next? Go wherever you want because it's great everywhere. All this is going on and there's another battle for the lead. Joe Logano trying to take a look underneath Kyle Busch. That was Larson trying to go to fourth, able to get it from Hemrick. And here's Logano, side by side, start finish line. 
32 laps remaining. Logano's been to the back twice today, trying to rally to the front. Can he make it stick and clear him in turn two? The clear, answer clear. is the yes, clear. as Bush got clear. sideways. Clear. Whew. That was a close one there, Michael. Joey's going to try to get out front and run away because Kyle Larson is going to come at these guys pretty fast. All the way up to the third position, he takes it away from Allgaier. Kyle Larson is about two and a half seconds back, and he's probably three or four tenths a lap faster with these fresher tires. It won't take him long at all. Look, about the, look at the teammates. Darrell Wallace Jr. to the bottom against Ryan Reed. Spencer Gallagher having a good day in the top 15. And the nine car in the wall. Oh, he gets some help, doesn't he? Oh, no. Looks like he, getting this, he got this oil dry right here, Michael. Remember, this is from where Cole Custer got in a wreck earlier. The radiator broke, water and oil on the racetrack. Uh, very slick still up there. What about Elliot Sadler rebounding? He's up to sixth. Driving around Daniel Hemrick. He was on pit road on lap 103, fixing a little bit of damage on that one car. And it's hauling. Second in line when you look at series regulars is Elliot Sadler. He's fifth behind fourth place and his teammate Justin Allgaier, last week's winner. But Eric Jones is there. The 20 scored sixth. And there are the teammates for fourth. Logano leading Kyle Busch by six tenths of a second. 30 laps to go. We're side by side live from Fontana, California. Closing on the end, round five for the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2017 at Auto Club Speedway. Kyle Busch running second when we went to break, but he is no more. Yeah, he got into the outside wall. Following our coverage here today, the eBay Motors post-race show live on FS1. Great move by Elliott Sadler there, making the pass. There you see Kyle Busch in the outside wall up on the top of our screen.
can see him scrubbing along. That's pretty significant contact, He hit Brad. it pretty hard here. You see, he loses a lot of time. Sometimes you just rush the wall, and other times you get a little bit stuck on it. We call that wall glue sometimes as race car drivers, and you lose a lot of speed. I had a lot of wall glue on me when I was a racer. <laughs> he was running second. He's now fifth. Here's what he's saying. Feels like he got into some speedy drives. Ah, uh, that's sure. remember William Byron when he ran through it. He brushed the wall in the same spot. That must be what happened. What are they saying, Matt? He was blaming the. You heard blaming the fact that they. He felt like they didn't clean the track as well as they could have. He got in the fence for the second time today. But he's reset. Was fifth. Now working on Elliott Sadler for fourth. He's got that. Next in line is teammate Eric Jones. So. All kind of like I said earlier lost. in the day, Adam, these Xfinity cars are a little more forgiving when you brush the wall like he did. He hit it pretty flat, pretty straight, not with the right front, not with the right rear, but kind of straight. And these cars, they don't uh, fall off quite as much as their uh, uh, adversaries there on the cup side. And the, the, the nine car, William Byron, we saw him get into the wall. He's fallen outside of the top ten. So a strong run for Byron is in jeopardy right now. And look at this battle for the lead. Kyle Larson just by a tenth or two every lap. He's getting on Joey Logano. And remember, a, a few moments ago, he was two and a half seconds back. He's cut that lead down to six tenths. So he's closing. He's coming pretty fast here. Logano last pitted at 103. Larson at lap 108. So the 42 has fresher tires. But at some point, will that balance out as we have 23 laps to go? You know, you should be able to keep that advantage. But I'm a little bit more concerned with the 42 car because he hasn't shown his typical long run speed today and the long runs we've had. But keep in mind, he's complaining about the car being a little bit loose. He's complaining about being a little bit tight. And they've kept working on it. And they might have found the, the sweet spot for that car. It's interesting you say that, Brad, because he was two or three tenths a second a lap faster than our leader Lugano forever. Last time by just a tenth of a second. So it looks like that advantage is slipping a bit. That time by they ran the same time. Yep. William Byron trying to get back to the top ten. Battling Darrell Wallace Jr. The rookie from Charlotte getting aggressive driving that car for Junior Motorsports. It's like the night car might slide up and just barely. Oh yes, gets it a, a good bit right there. And a great job by Bubba Wallace getting around William. The momentum slows right there. Whoa, Bubba That's just really close. Cat-like reflexes, jerks his car to the bottom and avoids the contact. And you can see the night car still running pretty well here. Darrell Wallace Jr. back and forth trying to get in the top ten for the fourth consecutive week, Chris. Boy, Bubba Wallace kind of having a carbon copy of the last three races. Fades early but charges late in the race. And I talked to his crew chief Seth Barber back at Daytona. He said one of the goals this year was going to be staying cool, not getting emotional when the day isn't going right. And that's what Bubba's been doing all season long, really working on that car and making it better. And that's what they did today, improving the second half. So now up in the top ten. And Chris, you could really see Bubba run well through the center of the corner there. I think it was a smart move for him just to roll in behind William Byron. Those two cars try to work together to catch up with the other guys in the top ten to try to get back in position to get a good finish. You say Larson was catching Logano, Michael? I was. <laughs> I mean, he is. It's happened. Joey lost a lot of time this lap. He had almost a uh, half a second down to two tenths of a second. So lost about three tenths of that lap. Maybe he caught traffic the wrong way or, or maybe he's starting to fall off a little bit. 20 laps to go. Logano's led the most laps today after starting on the pole. It's not been easy, though. A couple I, of hiccups on pit road. I wouldn't be surprised to see Larson just go where Joey is. And when they get them to turn three, maybe just dive to the bottom. This time he elects the high side, and Joey goes in the middle. So just trying to work around a groove where Logano isn't running. And he's coming right here. He's got a good run through the center of the corner on that higher lane. We know Kyle Larson loves the high lane. And if we know it, Joey Logano knows it, so he's going to keep his eye on that kid. What does your spotter mean here if you're Joey Logano and how much you're looking out that rearview mirror? Well, Joey Logano is using Tab Boyd, who is his spotter, tomorrow in the cup race. And I'm sure he's giving him a full report on where Kyle Larson is running. Because if you can find that lane that he's in and take a little bit of the air off of your car and displace it from his car, you can slow him down two or three tenths a lap. And, and that might be enough to hold him off. Your spotter for tomorrow, Joey Meyer, he's watching this race with all kinds of interest to see what grooves are working, where guys are going to make passes so that he can be perfectly informed for you tomorrow as well. Absolutely. You know, a lot of these guys don't get enough credit. They study, they watch tape, they work really hard to try and give the best feedback possible uh, as we see another great battle with the one in the 20 car. But this is a really tough job to, to navigate, not only as a driver, but as a spotter, what lanes are going to run and, and what's fast and what's not. 
Daniel Hemrick had that uncontrolled tire. 21 has come back nicely. Started on the front row earlier today. Career best start for him. Racing in the top 10 with fellow rookie William Byron. Brennan Poole also up there. There's Byron trying to get around Hemrick. Been into the wall a couple of times, but isn't slowing his progress. Looks like he's got a better car than Daniel right now. Cuts down to the very bottom of the racetrack. All four junior motorsports cars inside the top 15. Three of them inside the top 10. Battle for the lead. 17 to go. Larson all over Lagano. Right with the five. Feeling inside. Tab Boyd says. Kyle Larson's going to pull down as far as he can. He's trying to get away from that side draft of Joey Logano. I like what Tab said. Fill the air. He's telling Joey he's getting ready to fill Kyle Larson on the inside of him. Not only see him there, but feel him there. Larson very patient. Oh, he pushes a little bit off the corner. Joey's going to have a run. Back to the side draft on the top. He knows he needs to get to the top because that's where Kyle Larson is fast. Quick side draft clears him and keeps the lead. Wow. That's quite a sequence. So uh, for all that work Kyle Larson got to do and made it work, he gets to do it all again. <laughs> and what's, what Joey's counting on here is he knows the 42 has newer tires. He's just trying to wear him down. If he can make the 42 car run the bottom lane, slide around a little bit, maybe Kyle will lose that advantage. And that's his only hope here because Kyle is quite a bit faster right now. For a guy that started on the pole and led 65 laps, yeah, it's yeah, been anything. Or we did seen it on TV. Anything but easy for Logano and Larson may be a piece of the wall there and he's lost a lot of ground with 15 remaining. Yeah, definitely got into the outside wall. Let's take a look at it. He was trying to run as close to the wall as possible. Oh. Didn't hit it too bad, but uh, that'll definitely slow you down a little bit for a lap or so. You can just see the track was a little bit rougher maybe there than that's as high as I'd seen him enter the corner. Maybe a little bit rougher, just bounced up the track and got into the outside wall. He'll rebound from that, though, and go challenge Logano, I believe. He had dropped back almost six tenths of a second behind Logano. Already made up a tenth as they come back to the start finish line here. And that goes back to that strategy where Joey made Kyle run the bottom to pass him. And you saw Kyle slipped up off a of turn four, a lap or two prior. Now when he went back to run the top, he got loose. That's because he used his tires, overheated him a little bit. So that's part of the, the gamesmanship, gamesmanship and strategy that you're seeing in play here with these drivers. And this is really what separates the top level drivers from everyone else is the ability to, to make moves like that while going almost 200 mile an hour and running multiple lanes down a bumpy racetrack here in California. Larson goes to the outside of the lap car. Joey elects the bottom, see if he can get some momentum off four and go challenge again. Last time by Adam, Logano ran two tenths faster than Kyle Larson, so that move off turn two when, Jer when Larson took the lead and then in turn four when Logano got it back, that was a big move. Yep. Really changed the complexion of this. Kyle's going to have at least one more shot at it, but he's not quite as much faster as he was the last time. How aggravating is that if you're Joey Logano out there on the edge of control, running close to 200 miles an hour, like you said, not only having to look at the, the road in front of you, but wonder what that guy behind you is doing. It's aggravating, but that's also part of the fun. I can guarantee you right now, these two drivers are having the most fun they'll ever have in a race car. They both know they have a shot at winning this race in the closing laps, and they both think they can do it. Four seconds behind him is Kyle Busch, who's second in line as far as most laps led today, he's third. Eric Jones is fourth. And Elliott Sadler is fifth. How good is the championship leader? Mr. Consistency, if he stays where he is, I think he'll finish fifth in every stage of the afternoon. This guy just finds a way to close. It's really impressive. Kyle says, I'm back. <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> is anybody home? Check me out. Joey's been at the bottom of the racetrack. Now that Kyle's caught him, he takes the high lane. You top is good. There you go. Nice little middle. Back to you. Inside here. Dragging him back. He was able to split the upper seam in one and two. Look, chasing him down for the side draft. This is where things get really dicey, guys. And Larson's going to slide up in front of him. Will Joey let him in? 
nice move by Kyle Larson. That's just dirt track 101 brought over to the stock car world. He worked the side draft, was able to make him not quite clear in one and two, but close enough to where he could drive it in hard and in front of the 22 and slide up in front of him. That's what makes Kyle Larson special at tracks like this. Look New at man Joey. in charge. Look at Joey Logano. He says, not so quick, young man. Now Logano side drafts, tries to get away from Larson. Larson chases him down the hill. Let's see if Joey tries to pull the slide job again. They got a slow car in front with the lap car, the 99. Oh, Joey sliding. Larson's in the wall. Wow, is he going to make the pass while rubbing the wall? Can he use the 99 as a pick? Larson able to go to the outside. Logano fits <laughs> in behind him. All right, I hit the wall and took the lead. <laughs> That's what happened to Kyle Larson off turn two. But Larson's used to being in the wall, right? Logano digging down low. The battle for the top spot. With nine laps remaining, can Kyle Larson hold off Joe Logano? Oh, yellow's out. Caution. Seventh of the day, it's for second year driver Brandon Jones. Pretty good left front, spinning the fence on the right side. Be ready here. Looks like somebody uh, might Sorry, have come across his nose. He's running 12th when this happened. His teammate Brendan Gaughan is on pit road too with some damage. Brendan's been working on the right side of his car. I've seen him pit two or three times uh, where he might have rushed the wall and done some heavy damage. What are we going to do now? we got to ask Larry Mack. Well, there is no question. Four tires. <laughs> pit now. Every, everybody. I mean, we got a number of laps on your tires. We're going to go back racing with probably with four or five laps to go. If you didn't have fresh tires, they would absolutely run over you. And just remember, we talked about it earlier, the performance on pit road of the Ganassi cars. Kyle Larson's pit crew has been on spot on all day long. Be an interesting battle on pit road. He doesn't need to pick up any spots here. <laughs> he just needs to maintain. Logano hoping to grab a spot on the pit lane, though. Uh, he has new tires, right? Take me up. Yes, sir. Got some tires. Uh, everyone's sitting on a set, so majority are going to come. That's what you want to hear as a driver, isn't it, Brad? I got some tires in there, right? How many you got? <laughs> <laughs> Can you bolt an extra set on? I'll take eight of them. Hey, and you know how hungry this 22 team is. I don't want to remind you, but it's been since November 2015 at Texas, your last victory that this 22 car pulled into victory There's lane There's been a lot of captain. second place finishes since then, but it's uh, it's been a little bit of a dry spell. Uh, and we know that we can, uh, you know, get there, but uh, Joey's got a great shot at it here. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he's going to have a heck of a battle to get by Kyle Larson. And, of course, he got this whole pit sequence. Remember, we've had the speeding penalties. Both of these two guys have had speeding penalties today. Uh, so you just don't know. And, and just think about the two guys right behind them, Kyle Busch and Eric Jones. Both cars were running exact same lap times as the leaders late in that run. They get the right pit stop with the right adjustment. This is going to be a heck of a battle. And we know the Gibbs cars, fast on pit road. Easiest place to get by somebody is through a cycle of pit stops. Larson, Logano, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, Elliott Sadler, the top five. Then it's Ty Dillon, Brennan Poole, Justin Allgaier, William Byron, Daniel Hemrick, the top 10. We'll get pit stops here. A shootout to the finish in Southern California. Here they are, Matt. Kyle Busch back in this, Adam. He had two sets of sticker tires, and his pit's going to use one here. Kyle said that he needs the front to turn much better, and the back of the car just slips too easy. He suggested two different adjustments. Looks like they're going to go for one on the 18. Meanwhile, the 42 of Kyle Larson, he says his car just fires off great from the get-go. He really didn't want much adjustment on that 42. Chris? Elliott Sadler's lost 11 spots in pit lane the last two stops, so they need a good stop here. Everything looking good right now. Tell the team, pump up the tires for the short run. Vince? The 22 of Joey Legato, he said, I want my balance just like it was right there. They'll put some tape on the grill. The 20 of Eric Jones, too loose on exit. Started off tight. It's a great stop for the 22, but the 20 is slow. Kyle Larson holds serve. Spencer Gallagher playing strategy. Two tires for him. Then it's Logano and Kyle Busch. It'll be about five to go when we return.
aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. We are currently under caution, getting ready for our seventh restart with just six laps to go. And Joey Logano right now third. Take a look at his day because it has been crazy. So he started on the pole, but little did he know that pit road was where all of the action would really happen. Yeah, this was under lap 29 under caution. Buster for speeding on pit road fell to 35th. In stage two, he passed more than 30 cars. Then the car falls off the jack. Greg Irwin's having a little convo about what happened there, but that didn't stop him. Shot out of a cannon, Larry. Passed 20 <laughs> plus cars in just a little over one lap. And then we saw the 18 and the 22 going back and forth. The 42 got in on the action as well. And we got those guys in the top five right now on this restart, Adam. It's going to be a fun restart. And as we look over on the back straightaway, Kyle Larson here getting the lead, won the battle off pit road. I'm going to choose the outside lane for the restart. And that's big because Spencer Gallagher only got two tires and Kyle Busch Playing some games coming off the pit lane, going to restart outside. That that could be a difference maker here. All the gamesmanship. you got to love it. Kyle Busch slowed down at the end of pit road so he would come out fourth instead of third and not get stuck behind Spencer Gallagher. And it's going to pay off for him where Joey, who it probably is the only car that has the speed on the short run to run with Kyle Larson, is now stuck behind a car who's probably not going to go on the restart. This is a big, big move in the race. Yeah, how much decision making goes into work, which lane you pick by who's behind you? Did he want to block Joey Logano in by the Spencer Gallagher car or did he want to be in front of Kyle Busch? Well, Joey or Kyle did not know that uh, Joey was going to get stuck in the bottom lane. He's relying on Kyle Larson for that call, but this still played out very well for Kyle and both Kyles, Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch. Remember that finish here a year ago? Plenty of drama. Four laps to go, stacking up on the inside lane. Joe Logano did all he could to push Spencer Gallagher, but there's just not enough there. And Kyle Busch is going to try to take the lead with this move. He hasn't had the short run speed to run with Kyle Larson today, and we only have four laps to go, so this should get interesting. Look who's running with him. The Where nine did, is back. Where did he come from, man? He was outside the top ten. He raced his way into contention, and now he's battling for the win. William Byron right behind Kyle Busch. Logano looking for second into turn three. Joey has to clear Kyle Busch to have a shot at this race when it's going to be real close off a of turn four. Whoa, how tight is that? But that move allows Larson to pull away a bit. Three laps remaining in California. Darrell Wallace Jr. back up in the top five. Elliott Sadler is six. Some good late race rallies. That was a critical move for Joey Logano to pass Kyle Busch right there because he's going to need all three of these laps if he's going to have a shot at Kyle Larson. Look at Bubba trying to side drop off Larson and hold Elliott Sadler at bay. Sadler to the outside of Wallace, and here comes Jones on the bottom. This battle from fifth on back. Eric Jones with that orange 20 in fifth. Across the start-finish line for the leaders. Two laps to go. How hard are these guys, Preston Adam? The first six drivers ran their fastest lap that time by. The chips are down and they're pushing. A year ago, on the final lap, the drama unfolded. We had four lead changes. It was Kyle Busch leading at the white flag. Austin Dillon was able to get the checker. We'll see what happens here. As they come off turn four, they'll see the white flag this time. Logano ran a different line than Larson there. It looked like he gained a little bit of momentum down the front. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Four car links for Larson in front of Logano. Team Pinsky has never won here. And for Kyle Larson, trying to win for the second time in Southern California, his home state first career win came here one, three years ago. It'll be all about lane choice down here in turns three and four. Larson lost some ground the last time through. Where does he go? Joey's going to drive it in really hard in a lane up. He's going to try and get a big run here off the corner and maybe a draft down the front stretch. Larson went low. Back to the line. Logano's got to run. Going to be a good finish here. Give it to Kyle Larson. He wins in California. Yeah, then everybody gets up. 
guys. Good job. The pit crew was awesome. The team did a great job. Good job, Kyle. Kyle Larson never disappoints behind the wheel. I would say Kyle did a heck of a job. What was really key was the last pit stop was important. The last restart was important. But I want to go all the way back to when he pitted, when only half the field pitted, got those fresher tires, drove through the field, and got to the lead, established position at the front. Heck of a job. Final restart, Brad. Final restart, you can see he's got the 22 box in, who's really his only threat on the short run. It's just him and the 18 now. He's able to get some space, and he needed it, because another lap or so, and Joey Logano might have been able to get him. So really smart move by Kyle Larson with the lane choice and great execution. Look at Justin Algar pushing his way into contention. He finished up in the ninth position, so some of our Xfinity regulars really coming alive late. Could have been a different story if he didn't get trapped behind Spencer Gallagher, who had only two fresh tires. It allowed Kyle Larson to pull away and get the victory. The sixth of his career. Last time he won, Texas, last November. It's his third victory in the last 13 starts. He'll celebrate for Chip Ganassi Racing when we return. Back live in Fontana, California, it's time for the eBay Motors post-race show. Live on FS1, let's go to Victory Lane and hear from Vince Welsh and the winner, Kyle Larson. He parked it. Kyle Larson in his home state of California wins for the second time. Congratulations from his team because it was a total team effort. Came back from a pit road speeding penalty, but from that point on, everybody was rock solid. How do you describe the race that we saw out there today? Uh, the race in there at the end with Joey was was awesome. Uh, I had you know, just a couple out fresher tires than he did and was able to chase him down and just trying to be paced around him, got by him and then made a mistake trying to block him off four and he got back by. and. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun though. I wish that last caution would have come out because it'd have been a lo little bit easier for me to win. I think, but um, a heck of a race. You know, I, I honestly didn't think that we'd be here uh, yesterday. Um, I was struggling bad in practice. Fought the balance actually a lot throughout the race too, and then finally there those last two runs we hit on it and uh, felt good for the short run and throughout the long run. So can't say enough about everyone on our 
our Enios Chevy team. Uh, good farewell gift to Kent from Enios. He's going back to Japan to work there. So, um, you know, we had his name on the side of the car, which is cool. So, uh, happy um, second win here in California. Hope we can do it again tomorrow. Less than 30 seconds. What kind of momentum does it give you tomorrow? Thanks. It's, uh, I hope it gives us some good momentum. I was really confident about our, uh, our target Chevy on the cup side. So, um, start from the pole tomorrow and hopefully be, uh, be right here tomorrow. Kyle Larson, the winner at California. Ends today, P1, starts tomorrow, P1. Your thoughts on this afternoon, guys? Well, I think the first thing that comes to mind is that the new Xfinity Series rule limiting cup drivers, but only affects cup drivers that have been around for five years. Kyle Larson isn't a cup driver who's been in the series for five years, so he's running a lot of these Xfinity Series races this year, and it's really playing out for him. He's winning races, he's running up front, and he's, I think, learning a lot and really maturing into the spot where he's at now, where he's the points leader in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. What I love best is the action we saw today on the track. I can't wait till the Monster Energy cars hit the road tomorrow because it's going to be an exciting event. Once again, the top five here, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, and William Byron, the rookie. First trip here finishes inside the top five. Special thanks to Michael Walter, Brad Keselowski. A fun afternoon in Fontana. Congratulations to Kyle Larson. Now the racing continues. Monster Energy Supercross live. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.